Hello and welcome to Let Me Bore You to Sleep with Finney. Yeah. Um, yeah, my name's Jason Newland. Newland? New. It's very nasally, isn't it? Newland. My website's jasonnewland.com. It's now. Well, the Let Me Boy to Sleep department department section is complete. Now every day I release a new recording. You could download them for free. Yay. There's a hero. So what else? Uh, you can join if you want to. Join my Facebook page, Jason Newland's Boring Group. Um, I'm trying to think please only listen when you can safely close your eyes and I do believe that's all of the introduction oh what are you doing what okay just uh I'm getting a little help from, because it's Trivia Tuesday, getting a little help from ChatGPT to give me some some facts, some trivia. And I thought what I'll do is I'll do some trivia on Australia. Now, admittedly, some of these may not be correct. Okay, so don't don't use this as a, as a travel guide. <laughs> it It might be absolutely rubbish but I'm going to read it out anyway so if anything if I read out anything that's completely untrue and you find it offensive then blame chat GPT not me okay because I mean technically I could fact check but I can't be bothered it's weird isn't it I just I mean, maybe, maybe I will. Okay, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll, I will fact check. <laughs> I'm just thinking I don't want to upset anyone, especially as a lot of my listeners live in Australia. So I don't want to kind of annoy too many people. So, I have fact checked. So I've got them and now I'll fact check them. So apparently... Okay, so some of it's false, some of it's true. I'll read all of them out just so you, just for fun. So the first one is, so this is about Australia. Australia is wider than the moon. So the diameter of the moon is about 3,474 kilometers I mean, if you're going to do about, then do 350 or 3,480. But why three about 3,474? You know, it just seems a little bit specific to be have the word about before it. And Australia spans over 4,000 kilometres across. So apparently that's true. The next one, what? True. This is true as well. Apparently, the Great Emu War. I've never heard of this before. The Great Emu War of nineteen thirty-two is a real event where the Australian military tried unsuccessfully to control the emu population. Wow. Uh, here's one that's false, but it, it did say it true originally, but then it said it's false. Drop bears are fictional. Originally it said that drop bears exist and the um, Australians tell foreigners about it, or tourists. But apparently drop bears don't exist, but are part of Australian folklore, often used to scare tourists. Okay, 
I've never heard of a drop there before. And this one is true apparently. When scientists first encountered the platypus, the platypus, they thought it was a hoax due to its strange combination of features. I mean, I thought the platypus didn't doesn't exist. Does a platypus exist? I thought it was extinct. Huh. Okay. Well. Yeah, I mean, it's isn't it like half chicken, half crocodile, half penguin or something, isn't it? It's like, and then half gorilla. I mean, some kind of weird, it lays eggs, but it doesn't fly, and it lives underwater. You know, it's kind of the weirdest thing ever. So, the next one apparently is false. There is no record of a beer turf war fought with wooden <laughs> oh dear so this the original thing what did it say originally okay let's go back to the original one okay number five australians once fought a turf war over beer with giant wooden spoons this oh blimey okay so apparently that's not true really i wouldn't have thought that i was that's that's just I'm surprised. Okay, so apparently it's not true. Although there was no record of a beer turf war fought with wooden spoons, though Aussies have had plenty of beer-related competitions. Okay, number six. The kangaroo and emu were chosen for the Australian coat of arms because they can't walk backwards, symbolising forward progress. Apparently that's true. Kangaroos and emus can't walk backwards. Okay, here's my question. If, this is a question to the Australians listening, you might know this or not, I don't know. I mean, what? If an animal is chosen to be on a coat of arms, then that makes it quite a precious animal, doesn't it? Quite a admired animal. Or, you know, it's like a very, very important animal. If that's the case, then why were they trying to kill all the emus? Well, not all of them, but you know, why? It's like, if they're... <laughs> yeah. So... So the kangaroo and the emu can't walk backwards. I didn't know that. How did they find out? How how do you find out something can't walk backwards? I mean, there's lots of people I've never seen walk backwards. I've never seen a crocodile walk backwards. I've never seen a crocodile. But I've never seen loads of people. I've never seen my dad walk backwards. Does it mean he can't walk backwards? Does it mean he needs to be the symbol of... The town? I don't know. I'm confused. There must be lots of things that can't walk backwards. Fish. A shark can't walk backwards. Lots of them live living in Australia, isn't there? I wonder if crocodiles can walk backwards. So the next one's true, apparently. DIY-related injuries are common in Australia with thousands of accidents reported annually. Um, okay, that's not the nicest fact, is it? I don't know why they're telling me that. And by the way, DIY, it's do-it-yourself, but I think this is related to like power tools and stuff, not um, needing skin grafts. Uh, and damage you've done with your hand. So number eight, this apparently is true as well. The Australian lyrebird or lyrebird can mimic various sounds, including chainsaws, car alarms, and cameras. Is it lyrebird? Is that the right word? Le lyrebird? Lyrebird? 
L Y R E B I R D. Yeah. Uh, so that's cool. I think I've heard of that before. The next one is apparently true. The longest. <laughs> oh, really? Okay. The longest fence in the world is Australia's dingo fence, spanning over 5,600 kilometres. So here's a question. This this is not related to this really. So in Australia, do you have kilometers? Because we have miles here. We don't we don't have kilometers. We just have miles. So it's mile an hour on cars. And so how long is it to? How far from here to there? Is that it's it's one and a half miles. No one says kilometers. I don't say no one, but you know. Some people might have said it. I haven't. And I said kilometers just then. Kilometers, kilometers. It's key. Not really kilometers. It's kilometers. Uh, the next one, true. Apparently, the word mate. White mate was briefly banned in Parliament in two thousand and five. But public backlash led to the ban being reversed. Wow. See, the the term mate comes from England. Is because that's the way that we used to speak in this country. White mate, we still do sometimes, but not probably not, not quite as much. But, you know, the East End going back hundreds, over, you know, well over 100 years. 200 years, 1,000 years or whatever. So it was an adopted term that I imagine the English took over with them when they moved to Australia. However, it wouldn't be you. Banned in Parliament, this is Australia, isn't it? In the UK, in the English Parliament, you wouldn't get them saying that. They're all proper posh. And when they talk, like when the Prime Minister talks to the leader of the opposition, he doesn't speak directly towards, they don't speak directly towards each other. They'll look at each other, but they won't speak directly. It'll always be Madam Speaker or um, speak, Mr. Speaker. Is it Mr. Speaker or Madam? I don't know. But it's like Mr. Speaker and then they just, they say what they're saying, what their message is to the other person. But they never actually talk directly to each other. Which is kind of strange, I think. And they don't use things like mate. Can you tell my old mate there? Although I think it has been used. I don't think it's illegal, but just it's, they're very, uh, yeah, very well-to-do, like posh people. Quite a few of them in Parliament. A few. So the next one apparently is false. The direction of a toilet's flush has more to do with the design of the toilet than the Coriolis effect. Okay. Um good i don't know i mean i don't know i no idea what that's all about i mean the water the turns in a different direction when you're on the other side of the world isn't it which i guess is the coriolis effect didn't know it had a name um in australia you know when you look in a mirror is it still the same reflection or is it opposite to what you have here? Because I realised until I actually had a a photograph of myself, and I think why I never look the same in a photograph as I do in the mirror. And I thought I figured out what it is. The mirror's dirty, so when I cleaned the mirror, I was like, oh, okay. Tasmania is known is is known. This is true, apparently. 
is known for having some of the cleanest air in the world thanks to its remote location. Makes sense. I mean, it's, you know, I think that I live in the middle of nowhere. I mean, literally, Australia is, it's not in the middle of nowhere because there's lots of people living there. I don't know what the population is, but it's tiny compared to here, like with the landmass, I mean. So what is it? Uh, Australian, uh, Australian population. I reckon 30 million, that's what I reckon. And you might think, oh, because you've already looked at it. No, no, I haven't. Australian population, 26 million. That was 2022, so it's probably gone up. Probably. So, yeah, we have, I don't know, 65 million, maybe more, in this country. And we're tiny. This is compared to Australia. That's, what, that's, that's going to be my next question now. Okay, here we go. How many... How nanny, how many UKs could you... Oh, wait, it's already got it. It's already ahead of me. Could you fit in Australia? So you could fit the country I'm in, which also includes uh, Wales and Scotland. You could fit this into Australia 32 times and you've got, got less than half the population and one of Australian states in particular measures 10 times the size of the UK Western Australia one of the Australian states. So Western Australia is 10 times larger than the UK. So technically, <laughs> the, the chair is getting squeaky, so I've, I've got an idea. Technically, you need more people. And you know, it's very hard. That wasn't what I was going to say, by the way. That wasn't hard. No, it is hard, rather. I should move on from that sentence and say something, shouldn't I? It's hard to move to Australia if you live in this country. Um, it's not the easiest place to get residence. I kind of fancied New Zealand apparently the climates it's kind of a similar kind of place but nicer I don't know but I would yeah Australia there's plenty of room isn't there <laughs> to build car parks and it's just there must be a huge amount of Australia that's not being used that's like just wildlife and not being used because you couldn't spread half the population of this country into something 32 times larger. How does that work? I mean, you you must need phones just to say hello to your neighbour. Just like, you know, or like a mega speaker, loudspeaker thing, just to talk to someone that's across the road because it's so far away maybe do you have really really large roads because you've got enough ro room for like 18 20 motorways in one road i don't know if that's a thing do you have street lights <laughs> i don't know it's see i think with australia that in the u well Okay, mine. My only knowledge of Australia is a lot of it just comes from neighbours home and away. And I'm guessing, or Cell Block H, 
or Sons and Daughters. I loved Sons and Daughters. I was so addicted to that, I tell you. 1986. I loved it. It was the best one out of all of them. Like for drama. For drama, it was... It was nail-biting. Cell Block H. B. Remember B? Cell Block H... It was kind of gritty. I liked it. And it was a nice antidote to Home and Away and Neighbours. Although I still liked those. It was just... It, it was a bit grittier. A bit more... Oh, you know? Yeah. We actually had our own version of Cell Block H here. It was called, it was called Bad Girls, and it was a female prison. It was good, it was really good. And that was in the 90s. Wow. So yeah, I really don't have an idea what it's like in Australia at all. What it's like to live there. Um, I was told by a couple of Australians that in Australia, it's different. Farming is different to how it is in this country. Uh, I tried to, I, I tried to like say, "What do you mean?" He said, "You won't understand, but trust me, it's not the same. It's a different ball game altogether." So I don't know what that meant. Maybe the farms are much bigger. Well, I guess they are. They can be, I suppose. Uh, I don't know. I'm really not sure. I mean, for that size, you could literally feed the world. You could, couldn't you? Like, each country could just provide the world. I think with that kind of size, you should be able to be self-sufficient. Really, like food-wise. I would imagine it would be, if things were done correctly or in a way that was, I say correctly, I wouldn't know how to do it, but you'd imagine if everything's there that you need, then you're self-sufficient. You don't need to... Because, you know, part of... Isn't part of Australia kind of quite tropical? So... Okay, what I'm trying to... I'm trying to ask you, do you have bananas? Do you have bananas in Australia? And... Without being rude, and I don't want to be offensive, do you have kiwi fruit? Okay, and it's a genuine question. Don't don't be angry with me. We're not kiwis, we're Australians. And you know, I've had this conversation years, years, years when I was in London. The amount of Australians or the amount of New Zealand people that I'd meet and they get angry, it's like, oh, so what part of Australia are you from? I'm not from Australia, I'm from New Zealand. Can't you tell the difference in the accent? No, sorry. Just as I imagine people in Australia might struggle to, if they have not been to the UK, they might struggle to tell the difference between Liverpool and Manchester accent, or Suffolk and Norwich accent. And you might say, well, that's just towns. Yeah, but your countries are the same. It's, so, how, it's, well, yeah, I suppose. But, yeah. Oh, shut up. Right, what's the next thing? Um, false to direct, okay, true. Tasmania is known for having some of the cleanest air in the world. I've got them done that one. Apparently this is true. What? Okay, sorry. It is illegal to dress as Batman, Batman or Robin in Australia without a good reason. <laughs> Under the Summaries Offences Act. Come on. I mean, it's fact-checked it, and it's true, apparently, but I can't believe that's true. How can it be true? C come on. 
you're not allowed to dress as a fictional character. Superman's fine. Wonder Woman's kind of okay if you, if you can get away with it, but Batman or Robin is not allowed. Strange. Apparently this is true. And it's an a historical law. How historical can it be though? I mean how let's have a look. Da, 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 da. I mean, well, according to this, the modern nation of Australia came into existence 1st of January 1901 as a federation of former British colonies. So, I don't know. 1901, Australia became a nation forming the Commonwealth of Australia. Ah. So, it's not the oldest country in the world. When I think of historical, I think of like 600 years ago and stuff like that. But anyway, this is historical law, so it's... It's from the past. <laughs> it's in the past. Cab drivers in Australia were required to carry a bale of hay to feed their horses so that shows you so that's a law that makes sense to me you know it's just it's i mean the only reason why we don't carry around like in cars bales of hay because we don't have horses but we don't carry around tubs of petrol which would be like a sensible thing to do other than the fact that it would be extremely dangerous so we can't do that I say we I don't drive but I wouldn't want to be in a car that was full of like tanks of petrol but that would be the ideal situation wouldn't it to see so you could just if you ran out of petrol you just fill it up yourself but I think I think that's possibly illegal here. I don't know. I'm not sure. Um, oh, they've outlawed these big, scary knives now. Outlawed them in this country, and so you know it's good. It's, obviously, they need to be outlawed, but it's good now because you know if someone's about to be attacked, they can just say stop. Don't you know it's illegal? You're not allowed to carry those things. And the, the other person was like, Oh, really? I forgot. Wow, thanks for letting me know. Oh, nearly got in trouble there. So, yeah. Koalas do sleep for up to 22 hours a day, making them one of the sleepiest animals. I've done more than that in the past. I know what he wants. I know. Oh, okay, you don't want that, okay. I thought you wanted to cuddle. You wanted to lay on, on his back and have a cuddle, but he didn't. Uh, so koalas sleep 22 hours a day. The next one apparently is true. As previously mentioned, the kangaroo and emu symbolise Australia's forward movement. Uh, okay, I don't know why they mentioned it twice, but... That's quite cool, actually. I, I like the idea of that. It seems quite a positive outlook. But that, that might just... I mean, because it's such a young country, compared to where you look at the rest of the world, and when I say young, I mean, obviously it's not a young country and the people who were originally there have probably been there maybe millions of years, but it's as far as like a an established country with a name that the world kind of recognises. I think that makes sense. Uh, in Australia, 
love abbreviations, no, Australians love abbreviations, and almost everything is shortened. For example, Arvo for afternoon, Mozzie for mos mosquito. We use Mozzie here, so we've picked up. I think it's because of the the TV shows and also, um, what's his name? Oh, what's that film? That's not a knife. This is a knife. Crocodile Dandy. He became a bit of a hero in the whole world for a while. And a lot of people were kind of using his lingo. So, yeah. It's, um, I'm pretty sure I had a bit of an Australian accent when I, during the 80s for a little while because I was watching so many Australian soaps. Good day, mate. Fair dinkum. And like, just, yeah. It was cool. I'd like to have gone. Shame I got so old. True, John Allwood set the record in 2005 for shearing 721 sheep in nine hours. <laughs> um, why? <laughs> that would be the question. I mean, that's, I mean, that is a lot, isn't it? That's, I wouldn't want to be one of those sheep though, would you? Because you know he wasn't taking his time. There wasn't a lot of care being taken. I think there's a few nips along the way. Um, false, exaggerated, false, this is false apparently. While Australians enjoy beer, the average consumption is not as high as stated. This is false. Oh, okay. 96 litres a day is an overestimate. <laughs> okay. Um, th apparently this, no, this next one is true. Um, so Australians don't drink beer instead of water uh, in their tea. So true, uh, true is Bob Hawke. Bob Hawke, a former Prime Minister, was known for setting a beer drinking record at Oxford University in 1954. Oxford University. So was he a former Prime Minister of Australia? Oh, was he English? Okay, anyway. True, apparently cockroach races are an annual event in Brisbane held on Australia Day. Oh. The next true fact, apparently, is the longest straight road is on the Nunar Nular Bor plain stretching 146.6 kilometers I think it was making some really weird noises just then like He's huffing and puffing because I kept telling him to go into the bedroom because of his barking, but he refused to go. And then he kept coming, kept coming back and like sitting down. And then whenever I think he's settled again, he starts again. You make some weird sounds with him. And this next one is true, apparently. Wombats have cube-shaped poo, which helps it stay in place to mark their territory. Cool. Well, cool, but maybe not for so much for their bum holes. I mean, blimey, cubes. Imagine trying to give birth to cube poos every day. Oh, square-shaped poos. Um. We here okay. I here's a bit of uh, a thing. So I'm, I'm going to add my little trivia. In the eighties, there was a game 
called Wombat in this country. It was an outdoor game. I suppose you could play it indoors if you had enough room. And it was like these little, like almost like tambourine size things. They almost looked like tambourines, but it was rubber or like plastic across. And there'd be a, I think they were like little bean bags, tiny little bean bags. And you basically hit them to each other. I'm not sure, there might have even been a net that you had to get it over. So in case it's like kind of volley, volley in it. But they used to call that wombats. It might be called maybe wombat ball. Let me check. <laughs> I can't help it. Wombat game. Let's look at the images. Wombats. Nope, that's not it. Wombat. Maybe I got it wrong then. There was a thing called Wombat. Combat Wombat. Right, if I put in 80s. Wombat game, 80s. 80s. UK. Wombat. No. Maybe they weren't called wombats then. Happy salmon. Well, I don't know what that's about. Um. That is really throwing me off because I'm sure they were called wombats. 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 So if I just. If I just click out the word game. No, it's just coming up with wombats. 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 Uh, volley. That might come up. Wombat volleyball. No, it's woman's volleyball. Wombat volleyball. Nope. It was definitely a thing. Wombat volleyball eighties. Nope. It was one million percent. It was a thing, but I can't find it. So I'm not going to spend all my time looking. But it was definitely true. I just remember it. I'd never heard the name wombat before. So I'm. It's really difficult to forget it. And they were like little... Just... Things that you'd bounce the little beanbag off. It's true. It's true, I tell you. Uh, next one is... Australians did... In fact, popularise the term... Selfie. So selfie came from Australia the term selfie and they love taking photos in local wildlife so anyone listening to this every single Australian loves taking photographs in wildlife it's very generalised isn't it we don't really have wildlife here we just have more trees and grass and fields which every town has surrounded I mean, anyone that, that travelled here by plane will know that it's just one big bunch of fields and trees and parks with towns and houses sort of in the middle. You know, it's there's a lot of greenery in this country. It's um, a lot of fields, which makes you wonder why we're not self-sufficient. I've got that thing in my head at the moment. Be self-sufficient. So, the next one apparently. There's a law in Western Australia that limits the quantity of potatoes one can possess. <laughs> oh my goodness. Wow. It's an old law intended to ejaculate, no, regulate 
potato trading. Wow, I wonder is it still is it is it still a law or is it just something that was that you laugh at now? I mean did they have the potato police come round and check how many potatoes? Imagine sitting there having a, a jacket potato with cheese worried that you're gonna get raided just because you got enough to last you the month. Next one apparently is true. Never, never land. No, the, the, oh, the never, never river. Vinny's just farted, lovely. The never, never river exists in New South Wales, though the name's other, the name's origin remains unclear. So it's called the never, never river. Oh, cool. Uh, next is apparently, apparently true. Aluru, Aluru, is taller than the Eiffel Tower. I don't know what the Aluru is. Why don't we tell us what it is, please? The Aluru is taller than the Eiffel Tower at 348 metres, compared to the Eiffel Tower's 300 metres. I mean, is that a tree? I don't know. I honestly don't know what it is. Uh, next, Lake Hillier is indeed pink due to the presence of certain algae and bacteria. So you wouldn't want to sl swim in it then, I guess, I imagine. A pink river. Is it a lake or a river? Oh, it was a lake. It just said lake, didn't it? Lake Hillier. Is that a river, though? No, it's a lake. So what's the difference? Well, a lake's on its own. A river leads to the sea. Da, 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 da. I'm educated, educated. Yes, 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 I am. I mean, it might lead to another lake that leads to another lake that eventually leads to the sea. I guess, I think. The next one is Cran Canberra was chosen as a compromise because Sydney and Melbourne couldn't agree on which city should be the capital. So which is the capital then? I thought Sydney was the capital. Canberra was chosen as a compromise because Sydney and Melbourne couldn't agree. Hmm. I thought that was a type of juice, Canberra. That's cranberry, isn't it? Cranberry. Was chosen to co well. I can see how there could be an argument between Sydney and Melbourne just because outside of Australia, they're the two most famous, well, I guess they're just two very famous cities, aren't they? Like in America, you'd know about New York, uh, Washington, California, or, you know, I don't know, Texas. You know about places like that. Like in this country, you've got um, London, and um, I don't know what would be famous probably Leeds Liverpool because of the Beatles Manchester um, I don't know I, I'm not I'm not American so I don't know what would be what would be like a very a famous city I mean London obviously but Outside of that, I mean, if you're going to go for the UK, then you've got Edinburgh as well. That's a worldwide visited place. And you've got Wales. I mean, uh, Mount Everest in Wales. That's, that's a very popular visited place. But then you've got parts of, the, of England, which are the, like Cornwall. I know lots of different places and I've been to lots of places and lived a few places but it's hard for me to know looking in from outside because I'm not outside because I'm inside and I don't mean inside 
because it's cold and it's raining outside but I mean inside the country rather than outside the country looking in does that make sense? Um, next one this is true apparently James Harrison a Scottish Australian inventor developed the first commercial refrigeration system cool it makes sense really when you think about it that the first commercial refrigeration system would be invented in a hot country or somewhere that gets very hot now I'm surprised that it wasn't it says commercial maybe the first normal fridges because you'd imagine like there's parts of the world where you just can't keep anything cool no matter what you do you'd need a fridge so whatever you got you had to eat it sort of straight away or you got milk and you had to drink it all before you even left the shop because it was so cold warm warm that's it warm outside can you imagine it's really weird just a simple well, it's not as simple is it but like a, something that we do, I'll, I'd say I would take advantage take not advantage take it for granted but when the fridge breaks or when the cooker breaks or the microwave breaks down or the kettle blows up or whatever it's only then that I realise I need to get the electric sorted no, it's only then that I realised that I, how much I rely on it. Like we had a power cut the other morning and I really just didn't know what to do. There's no point, luckily there was, my computer was working because it was charged, but there's no internet. There's nothing, also, it's not, what are you going to do on a computer without the internet? What am I going to do? Um, I suppose if I've got apps, I could do some stuff. I could edit edit a video, I could do stuff like that. So yeah, that's that's available. But unless I've got something like that to do, what ugh, you know? Very strange to be so reliant. The next one is Australians celebrate Christmas in summer. I think that's pretty common knowledge, I would say. Cause it's our summer is their winter or your winter and your winter is our summer it's just because it's topsy-turvy isn't it it's a weird it's, it's so I've never celebrated Christmas well I don't really celebrate Christmas so much but I've never I've never experienced Christmas in hot weather ever I mean it's always it might be a mild, but it's still cold, especially in the evening. You know, it might be a mild day, but it's always cold, you know, come night time, uh, in December, end of December time. But to be somewhere where it's sunny, apparently it's common to see Santa surfing during holiday events. <laughs> That's something I can't really... Wow, I think that's etched in my mind now. Father Christmas surfing. Wow. No, that's just weird. Uh, the next one, true, is Australia exports camels to Saudi Arabia where they are used for meat and racing. Ugh. I just assumed that Saudi Arabia bred their own because... I thought that's where they lived. I didn't know Australia had camels. Do you have deserts in Australia? I mean, deserts, it's just basically a beach, isn't it, without the sea? Uh, next one is Australian magpies are notorious for swooping at people during their breeding season especially cyclists and p or pedestrians you know right you know penguins 
Right. It's one of my favourite animals for a variety of reasons. There's a chocolate bar. I don't know if it still exists, but it was called Penguin. And I never really liked it. I'll be real with you. I'll be honest with you. I've heard some people talking like that recently. These boxers, and they just kept saying the same phrase. I'll be real with you. I've got to be real. I've got to be every, like, they must have said it like 17 times in a five minute interview. I've got to be real. I've got to tell the truth. I've got to be honest. Right? If you're saying you've got to be honest, then what have you been up till now? You know, were you being honest earlier on when you didn't say you were being honest? I don't know. Anyway, we had these penguin bars. Didn't like them particularly. They used to melt a lot easily, especially if you kept them in your underpants during the summer. They really melted. But it wasn't a nice melt. Um, yeah, I don't, it was kind of chocolate that didn't, it didn't taste better when it was melted. Like a Kit Kat. It's messy, but you know, it kind of was quite nice when it's melted. But I, I didn't want it to be melted. But you know, I would, I would dip a Kit Kat in a tea because it's and then suck on it. So anyway, about the the um, <clears throat> oh my voice is going about the penguin. I might need to have a drink of water. There was another chocolate bar that came out called the Puffin, which was, I guess, a rival to the Penguin. Because, I mean, they're more colourful, aren't they? More colourful birds, but similar kind of ish birds that live in the sea and have gills and. I don't know what else. So yeah, I just remember, and I think I preferred the magpies. No, not magpies. Oh, I'm thinking of puffins. Not magpies. Oh, <laughs> none of what I said just makes any sense. Magpies, they're birds, aren't they? I thought you were talking about puffins. Because puffins and penguins. P -p 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 Puffin. Right, magpies. I know, they're birds. We have magpies here. What we do have in the UK is a bottle of water that needs to be drunk. That's what we have right here. Oh, I get through quite a bit of water every day. So with the D D D D D D D Yeah The only really the only aggressive birds we have in this country that I'm aware of is first of all the swan it can be a bit aggressive uh, especially if they're, if they're kind of guarding the young ones or something. So they can be a bit of a handful. And seagulls. They're well known for attacking, not necessarily attacking people, but trying to steal their food. So if someone's on the beach eating some chips, fish and chips or something, seagulls will like try and get grab it. And they're big old things. You know, seagull is one of the biggest birds we have in this country. Huge, some of them. I once saw a seagull trying to eat a pink, not penguin. I've got penguins on my head here. I saw a seagull, I remember this is 2000 and... Ah. Ah. When was this? 2004. Yeah, it was 2004, and I was walking to work because I had a part-time job in a 
gift shop. But I also got What did I get? And why was I up so early? I had an early morning cleaning job. That's it. An early morning cleaning job. So I was walking and I had my hat on. Which I didn't I don't normally wear a hat, but I like to wear a hat when I do cleaning jobs. Not that I've done one for a while. And for some reason I just decided to wear a hat. And I was walking at six 6.30 in the morning or is it 5.30 in the morning 6.30 anyway I saw this it was in the summer so it was bright outside but it might have been dark I think it was I think it was light but that that doesn't mean no it just doesn't make sense from where I was living I think it was probably early in the year so it might have been dark but there was street lights so I saw this seagull trying to eat a pigeon like a live pigeon I was like what are you doing I've never seen that before in my life it was the most ridiculous thing and the pigeon didn't do it didn't did nothing to deserve that it was it was just minding its own business playing a guitar and she's like, why, why are you bothering it? Just leave it alone. Yeah, I was trying to sleep, mate. I was trying to sleep. Keeps playing that bloody guitar. I was trying to sleep. Well, no need to, 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 to swear, is there? So, yeah, that's that's the only two pigeons. Some people get angry with pigeons. Oh. It's like, what's the difference between a dove and a pigeon, really? Nothing. The colouring, that's it. They're the same. And as far as pigeons go, they were so vital to us during, like in the past, for like passing messages on and helping the the war effort, you know, in the First and Second World War and probably other ones before that. So pigeons are a vital part of this uh, society in, in the past. So the next one is with over 10,000 beaches, you could visit a new one each day for 30 years. 30 years. You could, it says, okay, for nearly 30 years. 10,000 beaches. We have seven in this country. 10,000 beaches. How many beaches do we have in this country? I've got to look now, sorry. Number of beaches in Uck. No, really? 1,500? No, that's the thing. I don't. This is across UK and Ireland. I'm just see that's the problem with like the UK. The UK includes other places, so I'm only I want to know how much in. What is the? Okay, just let's say England then. In England. England. So I do it by country. England. Frequently appear in the guise of the best beaches in the world. The UK, the best beaches in the world. The UK sand, pebble, and cliff coastline has a plethora of beautiful beaches to choose from. Around one thousand five hundred. Um, I didn't realise there was that many. To be honest with you, um, I'm not sure if it's true or not. I have seen some nice beaches, so you know I'm not gonna. You know, I got I got to be honest. I won't lie to you. I, won't, I, won't, I can't. I must tell the truth this time. Wales and Torquay were the two places that I've seen nice beaches. 
it's not that I haven't seen other nice beaches. I just I haven't been to that many beaches. I, I guess uh, another one, Yarmouth and Lowestoft. Um, yeah, I can't think of anywhere else where I've been to the beaches. Deal, I'm sure there's a sand, sandy beach in Deal. So there's there's a few, but you know the really nice beaches, like in South End, where I used to live when I was a kid. They, it was all pebbles. And then I moved to another seaside town, pebbles. This there's a bit of sand, but it was like predominantly pebbles. And then they kind of moved rocks in because of the coastline or something, I don't know, something like these huge rocks, boulders, which ruined ruined the beach, I think. And they put, I think if, if Lois stuffed, they put these windmills, you know, there's wind farms or whatever, which, yeah, you know, this is a personal opinion, is, I mean, it's a great idea for as far as if we could, get electricity from the wind and stuff it's, it's amazing it's an eyesore though as far as from a beach perspective it looks horrible I, I don't think it looks because for me one of the good things this is a personal you know one of the things I like about beaches is when I talk about them my voice goes weird no I like being able to look straight out and not see anything I mean technically you could do that looking up but you know it's I, I, could, I could do that just take my glasses off and look anywhere I'd, I'll be looking not seeing anything but you know without making fun of my eyesight it's nice to be able to look out and have nothing no obstructions something special about that looking at a wind farm not quite the same not the same feeling not the same emotion but it's, it's personal to everyone isn't it it's, it's different for each person so the next one is true apparently Melbourne Melbourne was almost called Batmania after its founder John Batman I don't know if that's true is that why being walking around as Batman is not allowed because Melbourne was founded by someone called Batman oh, I'm seeing the dots are kind of coming together here I wonder I wonder if that's true or not it says it's true. And the next one is Aussies call McDonald's Maccas. It's even on some store signs. No. Really? Wow. Wow. I, I didn't expect that. I didn't think McDonald's would allow that. Because they're just so... They seem quite anal about like everything being correct. Like their logos and every burger being cooked for exactly the same amount of time and the exact ingredients you know like everything has to be like if you get a burger you know it has to be the same every time you go in there and stuff which i can understand is well it's not the case anyway but the burgers tasted different when i was a kid well when i was 16 15 16 I used to have a burger every week. I used to go to college. Yeah, I was 16. So I'd go to college on a Wednesday, I think. When I was in a chip shop. So one day a week I was at college. And catering college. Well, the, the whole college wasn't catering. Just my department. And if I could afford it, I'd buy a burger. A quarter pound of a cheese. 
and it was the best tasting thing I had all week. I don't think I've ever had a McDonald's that's tasted like that since. And it wasn't my first burger. It's not like, I'll call the, the, the first is always the best. No. No. That's not what I mean. It was always pretty much like that. And they were oily. Now they're just, maybe they have to be dry. They're just a lot drier now. They used to be dripping, <laughs> which I suppose maybe that's not a healthy thing. But a six day, it didn't really matter. Now they're just, yeah, they're not the same as they used to be. And it was something, I don't know. It was just, just different. But there might be a taste bud thing. Maybe my taste buds have changed or dried up or something. As I got older, they're not the same as what they used to be. It's possible. I don't know what the rules are on that one. So the next one, oh, we, maybe we copied it because I know some people that call, or did used to call McDonald's and Mackey D's. I would never do that because, I don't know, the idea of having a, like a, a nickname for somewhere you just go and get a burger, just, I don't know. But then, Marx's, Marx's, Marks and Spencers used to be called Marks and Sparks. Who used to call it Marks and Sparks? I didn't even know it's called Marks and Spencers. I thought we were just going to Marks and Sparks. Where did they get the Sparks from? It was Spencers. Woolworths was called Woolies. Boots was called Boots. I suppose that's not a good one. Um, what other ones that was? Um, Sainsbury's, Sainsbury's, Asda, Asda, Tesco's, Tickies, no. I can't think of any other things. Ooh. Movies, I used to call them flicks. Well, I didn't, but like the generation before me. Yeah. I can't even imagine going and seeing a sign that says Maccas. It's, yeah, can't it? I'll tell you what, I, I couldn't believe it when I went to Ireland, 94. Just where I just really had a lot of trust in McDonald's. The one thing I found with McDonald's is. No matter where, where you go, at least you know what you're getting. Wherever you are in the world, wherever town you're in, you should be able to just know what you're getting. But not in Ireland, not at that time anyway, not where I was living. It might be different now, it might be the same everywhere, I don't know. I was going to say they have Brill Cream, but they don't have Brill Cream on it. I've got to think about Brill Cream at the moment. Mayonnaise. They have mayonnaise, or they had, as uh, so it might, they might not have it anymore. They had mayonnaise in their burgers, and it was awful. Just too sweet, too. Yeah, really. I mean, I I could have it could have got away with. If you, if you want, just have it as an option where you can just add it yourself. Maybe that's what it is. Everyone was going in there and it was costing so much money in mayonnaise sachets that they thought it might just give everyone stuff with mayonnaise in it. But it was horror. I just didn't like it. What's the other thing? Yeah. That's very strange. It's just, yeah, very, very weird. Um, uh, 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 uh. This is true. Um, the Great Barrier Reef is massive. Okay, cool. Covering approximately 344,400 square kilometers. Okay. 
Wow. Um, it's not the only place that has a barrier reef, though, is it? I thought America had a barrier reef. Next one, Australia's Australians claim the world's selfie. I've already done that one. Why does that come up again? Oh, false. This is debunked. The kang the story that kangaroo means. Ah, okay, apparently one of the things it was false, but it was the story that kangaroo means I don't understand in an Aboriginal language is a myth, so it's not true. Next one, Australia is in is home to some massive spiders like the golden or weavers. Yeah, okay, everyone knows that. It's just a standard thing. It's, it's, that's, what, that's why there's only a small population living there because a lot of people in the world don't fancy that. Uh, next one, Queensland restricts rabbits as pets due to the invasion, the invasive Okay, this is true. Okay, I'm going to read this out word for word. Queensland restricts rabbits as pets due to their invasive nature. However, magicians are exempt. That's funny. So you're not allowed to have pets, rabbits as a pet. Blimey. And that's just in Queensland. So next, Australia has many... Okay, I'm not going to read about the wildlife. I don't want to read about that. Um, useless Loop is a real place in Western Australia named after its geography and salt mining operations. Cool. Next one is true. No, I won't read that one. Australia once set a record for making a 1.1 kilometer long pizza. Uh, <laughs> this is another one, it's a weird one. The world record for the most sausages cooked simultaneously is held by an Australian. It doesn't say any other details. I could get, I could ask. Do you want me to ask? Okay. What I'll do. Expand on 46. Right. Okay, here we go. The fact about Australia holding a world record for the most sausages cooked simultaneously refers to the Australian tradition of hosting large scale events that involve cooking sausages, often as part of charity or community gatherings. These events are often called sausage <laughs> sausage <laughs> sausage sizzles, which are beloved in Australia and frequently held at public spaces like parks, hardware stores like Bunnings Bunnings? I've not heard of that and sports events. The world record for the most sausages cooked simultaneously was achieved by participants grilling hundreds or even thousands of sausages on multiple barbecues at once. These type of events are also linked to Australia Day um, celebrations where Australians gather to cook large quantity of sausages. Snags in uh, brackets. I've not heard that term before. As a casual outdoor tradition. In terms of records, okay, one such record, 2013, during a community event in Canberra, where over 40,000 sausages were cooked as part of a charity fundraiser. Uh, or additionally, sausage sizzles often involve friendly competitions between groups or charities to see who can cook the most sausages or race the most funds making it a national pastime 
with a light-hearted competitive element okay cool it's offering me all more information up for one but it's fine it's enough it's enough information Melbourne has attempted to set the world record for the largest toga party though it was unsuccessful what's a toga party I do know but I don't Kangaroos outnumber humans in Australia by nearly two to one. Good. I love kangaroos. I mean, kangaroos, I mean, I suppose they are the symbol, aren't they? It's the whole world, world, knows about kangaroos in Australia. However, are there kangaroos anywhere else? Or was it only Australia? I don't know. When you think about it, you know, it's not, there's, there's the same animal in different countries, isn't there? So, when you think about the, Trying to think of an animal. What is the animal? Emus. You have emus in Australia, or they have emus in Australia. We have them running around in London. So it's, it's just normal. Um, the next one is the echidna is one of the only two egg-laying mammals in the world, along with the platypus. all mammals laid eggs God, they make their mind up don't they the next thing they spend way too much time looking in at people at animals private parts I think they need to leave the animals alone tr tr <laughs> sorry it's just, that made me laugh true Vegemite's taste is famously divisive due to its strong salty flavour Okay, so divisive, you mean some people like it, some people don't. Well, we have a thing called Marmite here, which is, I think it's kind of a similar situation. Some people like it, some people don't like it. And I'm in the latter, or the former latter. Yeah, I wasn't, I'm not a fan. I've never had a Vegemite. The first time I ever even heard of Vegemite was in the uh, Down Under song. He got a Vegemite. He gave me a Vegemite sandwich. That's it, he gave me a Vegemite sandwich in uh, Men at Work, Down Under, yeah. Um, he was six foot tall and full of muscles. He gave me a Vegemite sandwich. He said, do you come from a land down under? Oh, yeah. One of my favourite songs of all time. It is. So that was a weird year, that was. About 1983, I think. 1982, probably 82. Strange times. Yeah. I think I, because I think what happened is I had my appendix out. I came out of the hospital, couldn't go to school, which is good. I love that. And, but while I was off, for, I had a couple of weeks off, well, off school. And I think I had a book on UFOs I was reading. So it was a good, it was nice. And, and it, might, it might have been 1983, because I was 12, so it could have been 83 to be fair. Because I turned 12 at the end. Yeah, it probably was 83. So, it was 82 or 83, one of them.
was I 11? It doesn't matter, does it? I think it's, I was even a first or second year. So I, probably the first year or second, one of them. I could check the dates of the song coming out. Do you come from a land down under? Where we be going the thunder? Ooh, ooh. What was I going to say? Um, yeah, the phone phoned up. The phone. The school. The phone schooled up. The f school phoned up. And spoke to my stepmama. And told her that I'd been... I don't know, not not working properly, not turning up, or I can't remember what it was. Anyway, I got in trouble. Things were so good for a while, and then suddenly, I don't know why the school decided to moan at me. But yeah, apparently I didn't take, I wasn't doing homework, and I wasn't whatever else that I was supposed to be doing. I mean, I thought, I thought I had, you know, I kind of came to an understanding probably by the second year. Don't disturb me, I won't disturb you. That was kind of one of my, and some teachers accepted it, some didn't. And to tell you how good I was, I think I got detention twice in five years. And that was from the same teacher. Apparently, if it was a new teacher, decided that, and I think it was the last year of school as well, decided for some reason that I wasn't behaving the correct way. But all the other teachers had given up. He's just like, okay, he's just being him. But this particular teacher, I think I was probably being a bit verbal, but probably just trying to impress A girl, a, a girl probably. I tell you what was really weird is I think it was the day before or the week during the last week of school the deputy head came up to me and I don't know what it, I might have been cheeky to him I don't know and he was shouting in my face never done that before and I mean it, it didn't worry me it just I was just smiling at him and I was kind of while he was doing it I started to think why am I putting up with this I'm literally three days left and I'm out of here why it doesn't matter what he says he was the one that was always like the the not so nice one. The headmaster was lovely, but this deputy head, he was the French teacher. And the, the headmaster, when he joined, because he, he, he was kind of quite new, and I think in the second year we started, and he was telling everyone how he used to be a dustman, and I'm not quite sure why, but he was he was telling us that. But he was, he was nice, very sort of gentle, nice bloke. But the French teacher, who was also the deputy head, very strict. Luckily, I didn't have to really deal with him because I didn't do French. Didn't take French at all. Uh, no. No, I didn't. I might have done, but I don't remember it. I got to, yeah, if I did, I think I might have got kicked out. No. I'd know some words, wouldn't I, if I'd learned French? I know like some words under uh, un petite penny I, I don't know it's not that's just words that I, my French girlfriend used to say to me I don't know under toi catch cinq six set with not this I know a bit of Spanish familiar I mean, it's family. See? 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 It's good, isn't it? See is yes. Uh, what other ones? 
um, nine, that's no in German. <laughs> that's, it's, I don't, I don't know. You know, with countries, isn't it weird that, did I tell you that Turkey changed their name to, it's now T-U-R-K-Y-E. So it's Turkia, Turkia, I think it is. And so I was thinking, why don't we just do that for all the countries? Call the countries what they want to be called. Deutschland, España, um, Mexico. Uh, like, you know, give, give people, give, call it the names that they call it themselves. Uh, Italia, uh, Francais. Is it Fr French? Francais, isn't it? Uh, you know what I mean? It's like just, that seems quite respectful. But in England, we expect everyone to say England. England, say England. We really call you Germany, you call us England. We call you England, but you'll not call us uh, Deutschland. No, Germany. Doesn't even sound similar, does it? Espanol. Espana. Espanol or Espana. Like Mexico. Why have an X if you're not going to pronounce it? I don't know. But hey, it's, it's nothing to do with me. I didn't create it. Didn't create the word. And what's the other one? There's probably loads of countries that are not what, you know, Denmark. I bet it's people who live in Denmark probably call it something different. People who live in Poland have a different name for it. So why don't we, why aren't we taught the proper names? That's all. I mean, maybe world peace would be easier if we just use the proper names for, you know, I'm happy to call Germany Deutschland, or Mexico Mexico, or uh, Span Espania, France Fran Frank Frank uh, Frank Franca. Uh, what other countries? Scotland, Scotland. I don't know. To the, or Welsh, even like the, like Wales, but they might have, because they've got a different language. Maybe it's, they call themselves Don Fleckin or Holy Wheels, or so, I don't know, some kind of, it might be hard to pronounce if you're not used to the lingo. That makes more sense, because they'd be, we'd get on, there'd be more. I don't know, it's like people would get on more if we were using each other's proper... It's, it's a bit like introduce... i tell you what it's like. When I lived in London, and we're talking the uh, late 80s to start with, then I went back in the early 90s. And I worked in these places, and there was a lot of people from other countries working there, like on a, a temp agency. People from Africa, uh India, predominantly kind of the African nat nations, and then come in this, and they'd, uh, they'd all, you know, when it's busy, they might get like 40, 50 uh, temps in. Some will be, some of them will be English, some of them will be, there might be people from Russia or whatever, but maybe not Russia, but they might have been. But it's different, different places, but at the time, it was definitely. Uh, African nations that were coming in uh, that were sort of moving to London and stuff and I always got on with everyone and this um, but they would like say they say what's your name I say it's Jason because I was also always also new new as well I said oh Jason so people would call me Jay or Jace or whatever now someone else would come in and say what's your name is uh Mungamba, something like that. They say, okay, Mike, we call you Mike. No, my name is Mungamba. All right, Mike. I have to say, like, give it, give the person like an English name. And that is actually what happened. I mean, this is not even, I mean, Andre, okay. 
He was Irish. Andre is not a hard name, is it? The supervisor called him Andrew or Andy. Andre, it's not a hard name. <laughs> it's really not. And it was, you know, sometimes they'd come and they'd, they'd give a name that wasn't their name. They understood early on that if they made it, the more harder they made it for a, for the employer or the supervisor, the, the, they just would get put to the back of the queue. They wouldn't get any work. So the amount of people who would come in and say, uh, be called Thomas or David or Richard. Which, and then you're like, that's not their name at all. Because I'd see their their pay slip or I'd see their ID and they'd have a completely different name. And it was quite cool. It's like, yeah, that was clever. Tom, easy to remember. And, but it's kind of sad. I mean, I'm not saying that I'd remember everyone's names anyway, but I, f I find Tom's difficult to remember. I did, I did ever tell you this. I, I lived in this place. I've lived in a lot of places. There's this one place where... Oh, where were they from? I think Nigeria. That is this one man from Nigeria. I, I got to know him. He was, he was cool. But he, he moved in to this one room. And within about a few days of him living there, we were getting letter after letter. I'm talking 10, 20 letters a day sometimes for him or for other people that weren't him. And it turned out there was about 20 people living in that room. But they weren't living in that room. But there was always lots of people in that room. But they weren't living there, if you know what I mean. They come and go... And a couple of them like were trying to sell me jewelry, and I got on with everyone, but they weren't living there because. Plus, if you share a bathroom in a house, you know who's living in the house. And only one was actually living there. And I think when I moved out, I gave them my TV, because they were, yeah, because I moved away, so I gave them my TV. But I, I got on really well with them. I didn't, but the rest of the house, the people in the house found it intimidating. But I didn't. It's like they were all. I was a young man, and they were all young men. The fact that they were from a different country like made no difference. They they didn't hassle me. They didn't. Oh, well, it would have been a problem, obviously, if it, if it had done that. But they didn't. In fact, they were funny. I used to chat to them, and. I spent I spent years working with Africans, different from different nations, and I always got on with all of them. Worked in different agencies where I did security. I worked with loads of Africans, African men. There was there wasn't really any women at all in the jobs I had. I never really worked with women. Um, in the nineties, that is. And then when I worked in the I worked in a big bakery and that was a mixture of African men and I don't know, is it South Asian, I don't know, like Indian, Pakistan, Bangladesh, I don't know what the correct term is for that area, East Asia or South Asia. So that was the like the two groups predominantly that worked in the bakery, in the bake, that baking bakery, but in the distribution, it was all like white people. I guess I use the word white people, English people, or that's not that's not the right word, is it? Um, yeah, the reason I'm English because 
all pretty much everyone that I met in the bakery that I worked with um there was uh, English was definitely their second language but I can only speak one language so I can't I I've never judged anyone that can't speak a second language particularly well because I'm still I'm still working on the first one but it used to be weird I'd fall asleep on the coach coming home because we'd have a just like a little mini bus that would bring me back to where I lived to like just around the corner from where I lived which was handy because especially on the shifts where I'd be doing there'd be no buses and I get on the bus I sit at the back I didn't know anyone because the place was so big that I didn't really get to know many people and not one person was speaking English and it was just weird I got used to it after a while because this was quite early in my days in London you know after being there for 10 11 years I was completely used to hearing non-English speaking like cause that's just that's what you get well that's what was what it used to be like in London and I didn't care it didn't bother me I was comfortable with it if anything it's gonna sound strange but when I moved away from London to come and be closer to my nan I was on a bus one day and I thought there's something wrong about this there's something weird I don't understand what it is there's something not quite right I looked around it was just all white faces speaking English and I hadn't experienced that for over a decade it was very strange because usually it's different, you know, there's lots of different voices, lots of different languages going on, sort of on a tube or on a train. It's not a huge amount of talking on a tube, to be fair. And it's noisy, so you can't necessarily hear it, but on a train, yeah, it's like on a, on a bus, it was so different. And I thought, I prefer it in London. It, it just, I don't know, it just seemed weird seemed almost like it when I first moved I'd come back to London every weekend and as soon as I got off at Stratford so I'd get a coach and I'd get off at Stratford and the energy hit me like oh everything is like a thousand miles an hour compared to where I was living in now like well back you know when I moved because everything was really slow there and so when I went back to London everything was quick there was so much noise so many people you know I'd see more people in a day walking around London than I would see an entire in a, in a year living in my town that might be an exaggeration but you know if you go to the West End you wait in a tube station you're seeing thousands upon thousands upon thousands upon thousands of people in a day if you walk around so yeah it's probably not an exaggeration to be fair so yeah it feels that the, the longer I left it the more I didn't necessarily want to go back I mean now if I go to the town it seems really noisy and busy compared to living here because this is almost stand still it's time has stood still here but in town it's slow it's a slow place like it's, there's not much going on just a few shops and technically it's a city but it's there's not it's not a lot going on there's busy times, you know, Saturdays and, but there's not a lot going on, you know, it's not really, maybe Friday, Saturday evening there is, Christmas, you know, shopping time, it's busy, but apart from that, it's just like any other, any other town, really, 
But here, where I live, in this part, <clears throat> blindly, I can walk around and sometimes not see anyone. Especially when it's raining. <laughs> oh yes. That's when you, you find out who the real dog walkers are. Because there's a lot of fair weather dog walkers around here. You see them every day in the summer. As soon as it gets rainy and cold, the dog goes in the garden, which is exactly what I would do. Oh yes, but it is exactly what I have tried to do a little bit when it was raining too hard. Let him in the, in the garden and then he can just, you know, chill out. But unfortunately, it doesn't like to go to the toilet on command. So if I'm like out there, I'm trying to stand under a tree, which doesn't, for some reason, doesn't seem to stop the rain, which I don't understand why. And he won't go to the toilet. He won't do a wee wee. And he wants to like walk somewhere else. I'm trying to explain to him that it's raining. I don't want to get soaking wet. But he doesn't listen. And the weird thing is, when we go out into the park, he stands at a tree, it doesn't seem to help if it's raining. But if it's not raining, you stand under the tree, and the tree drips. So it's almost like this weird, this is something weird going on. It's raining under the tree when it's not raining away from the tree. I guess maybe it's just the leaves are wet. I suppose that's that makes sense. But hmm. I think I've covered all the things. There was only 50. 50. Um trivia thrifty trivia as I'm going to call them about Australia there's a lot more and it's a beautiful country and if, if at any point I've come across is like I'm making fun of anything um, good <laughs> no I'm, I'm not really making fun I'm just having a laugh just being silly it's uh, it fascinates me uh, I'd like I'd like to hope to one one day I can visit uh, Australia and you know something oh you can't want to visit New Zealand New Zealand's nowhere near Australia no it's a lot closer than where we are though isn't it you know it's like if if you was coming from Australia and you said oh I'm going to go and visit uh, Russia while, while, we're, while we're in uh, Scotland let's visit Russia it's the same thing Russia's nowhere near us there's a hell of a way closer to us in Scotland than it is to you in Australia. You see what I mean? That's, that's how I see it. So, I'd like to go to China. I'd like to go to Japan. I'd like to go to Russia. I'd like to visit... I think I'd quite like to visit all the Rus or all the sorry, all the European countries. It'd be nice to visit everywhere. I'd, I'd, my ideal situation would be to travel doing this. You know, just... I'm thinking maybe I'll try and make that happen when I finish my degree in six years. So when I hit 60, just go travelling. Travel around... Start start with travelling around the UK because I've got Vinny with me, so I'll go into stay in doggy hotels, which means I could technically do that. If I could afford to do that, I could do that now. You know, I could go and stay in different places and do a podcast about it, talk about that as part of these let me boy to sleeps things, and then when I've done my degree depend on whether or not I go and do a master's 
I quite like the idea of maybe then visiting, you know, making my way, working my way out into Europe and then moving into, I don't know. I just want to go to, it, it might sound a bit wimpier than me, but I want to go to safe places. Just, I don't want to go anywhere where I'm suddenly having to leave the country, you know, in, with an hour's notice, because that doesn't really suit me. Plus I'll be 60, I'll be in my 60s, I'll be, I might not move quite as quickly and be quite as uh, fresh and virile as I am now. Oh dear. So yeah, that's that's that'd be quite a cool thing. <sighs> yeah. And of course, well not of course, but I'd like to visit America on the whole of America. I travel through and Canada maybe start at Canada through Mex through America and then into Mexico and then all through South America. So I do North America first, Middle America, which I guess is because North America is Canada, isn't it really? Am I right? And then Canada, uh, America is America. And then South America would be, you know, all the, the countries in the South. Mexico and then onwards. And there's other countries. I'm not sure. Asia, South Asia, I'm not quite sure. Again, I don't know what the correct term is. But I don't know which parts. Um... I'd like to go to Dubai, I'd like to visit there. I've been there, but only at the airport. So that'd be cool. Yeah, there's, there's a big old world out there. I could just do meet and greets. So I could just go and do meet and greets with people and do put on a, like a little evening and you could meet me and God, can you imagine how exciting that would be for you? And But the, the trip would need to be covered financially. So I can't, you know. That'd be quite cool though. Maybe a, a goal to aim towards in the food char. Right, downstairs are getting ready for bed now, I think, so I can hear them. And uh, I imagine, that sounds weird, doesn't it? They, you, <laughs> they really, <laughs> it does. How would I know what they're doing? I, I can hear them. You know, I can't hear them. I can hear the bathroom. So I'm thinking if he hears anything like that, he'll start barking because he's obsessed with her downstairs. Completely. Really is. Loves her so much. Um, so I'm going to go. Thank you for listening. This is going to take ages to edit because of all the barking. And also all the noises that Vinny made. So thank you for listening. Remember to be kind to yourself because you deserve to be happy. And be gentle with yourself. Lots of love. Bye. Relax. in a more deep and meaningful way. Maybe in a way that can not just allow you to feel calmer now and throughout the time we spend together here, not just relaxed at the end of the recording when it's finished and 
you can enjoy that sense of comfort and peace. But also, I think it would be nice to have those feelings of relaxation continue for longer after the recording is ended so that you can still benefit from listening to my voice maybe in a few hours time perhaps tomorrow and then by listening regularly especially if you find like some people do and myself as well I Sometimes I find one particular recording that really resonates with me. And I'll just listen to it over and over again. Like every morning, every evening. There was this recording from we're going back to about 1999. It, was a, it wasn't hypnosis, but it was a guided visualisation. So it kind of was hypnosis, really. And I managed to find it again. And it still has the same effect on me. And part of it was... person's voice relaxed me just felt so peaceful and I'd look forward to listening to her in the morning and in the evening And I knew before even pressing the play button that as soon as I'd done that, pressed the play button, this was in the days of CD players, pressed the play button. In fact, it might have even been a tape, tape recorder. I'd lie down on the bed and then even without necessarily listening to her words because I had them memorized really. It was as if my body knew exactly what to do. And the muscles just almost went into automatic relaxation. And I remember my mind would slow down. Now, now, I was, I was listening to this recording in the early days of learning hypnosis. And long before I ever made any videos or audio recordings myself because I didn't start doing that till 2006 
but I knew. I knew how helpful I found being able to just let go, to have that trust in the person that I'm listening to. Knowing that it's going to be just as relaxing, if, if not more so, each time you hear my voice. You may feel the same. Some people have been listening to me for over a decade. Maybe not solidly, obviously not 24 hours a day, but maybe people come back. Some people maybe listen every day. And something that I do, which you may not realize by listening, is when I record these recordings, now for example, I also am affected by the words that I say. So if I said to you, focus on your feet, notice your feet relaxing. I will be focusing on my feet. I will be noticing my feet relaxing. If I said focus on your hands, and maybe notice the difference between each hand. Perhaps notice the, the air in the room, the temperature of the room on the backs of your hands. You may start to notice it almost feels like a very light breeze, even though there may not be any type of breeze at all where you are right now. And as you become aware of your hands, I'm also aware of how relaxed my hands are feeling now. comes to potentially drifting off to sleep, which may be the reason you're listening. I also feel drowsy, 
when I make these recordings. I also notice my mind drifting. In fact, at times, I've actually fallen asleep. without even noticing. And then I carry on talking. It's only when I listen back to do the editing, I hear snoring. And I think, I don't remember snoring. I remember talking. Is it snoring or is a pig turned up? That's what I sound like when I snore. And I get really into the whole experience. I don't know how you feel. How relaxed you feel in your feet. How relaxed you feel in your hands. I've noticed more and more that the more relaxed, deeper level of comfort you feel, the easier your breathing becomes. It's almost like that additional muscle relaxation. So this allows you to breathe easier. without necessarily focusing on your breath. However, being able to notice in which you breathe so naturally You breathe so very easily and smoothly. Whenever I imagine my breathing. 
breathing, improving. When I've got my eyes closed, I tend to visualize a beautiful field with trees and flowers. Producing all that life-giving oxygen. It feels nice. to, if nothing else, just take in some time away from everything. Enjoying that feeling of peace, serenity. with a joyful heart. Time seems to just Drip by so very slowly. Completely unattached to any thoughts whatsoever in this moment. Completely free. Noticing that Your mind has slowed down.
slowed down. Because nothing really requires your attention. You can enjoy the physical sensations of allowing the stress to drip out of your body. Drip in out of every part of your body. And being released from your brain and your mind. Slowly, but surely, the muscles in your legs so deeply and the feelings the pleasant feelings in your arms and shoulders Deepening each part of your body further and deeper and deeper. Noticing the feelings in the back of your neck, the 
feelings in your wrists. muscles in the front of your body, are also feeling deeply there's a sense of peace spreads through your very core. Even when you focus on your mind, your mind becomes even slower. Relaxing. So very slow. stomach peaceful in your stomach back, notice notice how relaxed you now feel all of your back.
your spine, from your brain all the way down the middle of your back, sending and receiving millions of messages every day. Comfort increasing. Deeply relaxed. Spreading those signals down your spinal cord into every part of your body. Your shins and your calf muscles. your elbows, feelings of peace and tranquility spreading through your body. tips of your toes, to your eyes, your fingers, all the way to your lower back. Letting go, really letting go. Drifting. Mind. Just wandering away. Happy.
to let go. Let go. Completely let go. So tranquil. Your whole body. Joy in a sense of letting go. Even more Enjoying the space, this space of peace and safety.
letting go. Maybe we can just focus on the different parts of your body, just to notice forehead and your eyes. So loose. Noticing a sense of Complete freedom. Absolute freedom. Peaceful energy. Peace to breathe, so much easier. No. 
not have noticed. Your mind drifting. Peaceful. Blissful peace. Blissful peace. Drifting. Total peace. Go. body
body feels almost invisible. And you could start to notice that you are feeling more relaxed. Even though I've not purposely focused your mind upon that sense of physical comfort that is growing within you throughout your body. And your mind starts to slow down. And that could be almost in recognition of, I guess, my speech not being particularly fast. And things just generally feel calmer just by listening to my voice you give yourself a, an opportunity to take a break from the day take a break from your life as it is and to give yourself a rest giving yourself permission to take some time off and to allow your body to relax and allow your mind to slow down which in turn releases the tension any stresses that you had in your body It's almost as if the parts of your body just open up, allowing the negativity out. And at the same time, replacing that negativity with positive, healing energy, which then fills your body up. And your mind to also starts to appreciate those feelings of increasing confidence and an almost uplifting feeling of positive healing. An energy that spreads through your body like a wave 
of comfort. And all this comes from just allowing yourself a few minutes, maybe half an hour, however long you want it to be, to just rest. And allow your mind and your body to almost reset itself to the, to the settings of comfort and relaxation, calmness, which allows more room for feelings of pleasure and happiness to move around your body and into your mind almost as if your mind and your body are sinking together almost mirroring each other with that growing positivity and calmness and it feels nice it really does feel nice to know that you are the one that has allowed yourself to feel more comfort and to experience more of this deep relaxation spreading throughout your body. And as I focus on each part of your body you can notice that that part becomes even more relaxed just by focusing on it it becomes even more calm and comfortable just by focusing and as I move down your body starting at your head the parts that you've already focused on will continue to relax deeply and those parts that we've not yet focused on will just automatically release any remaining tension in anticipation of even more comfort about to come. Now, I'm going to start by focusing on your forehead. Just being aware of the feelings of your forehead. And any background sounds like Mr. Herbert the Pigeon can just allow you to feel even more relaxed. It just means you're in the moment. This isn't this isn't a sterile environment. This is the world. I live in the countryside. So there's lots of nature sounds around. So as you focus on your forehead. Just notice how it becomes even 
more relaxed as you focus only on my voice and that part of your body. Moving down to your eyes, focusing on your eyes, noticing how the, your eyelids feel so heavy, yet so light at the same time, and all the muscles around your eyes relaxing completely, moving your focus down to your mouth, your lips, your tongue, your teeth and your gums, and the whole of your mouth relaxing, calm and loose. As you focus now on your jaw, not just the part of your jaw near your mouth, or your chin, but all the way up the sides of your face to your ears, that whole of your jaw, feeling more. Relaxed and calm. Focus in on your neck, the front of your neck and your throat. Relax in and loose and calm, the sides of your neck, the right and left side of your neck, relaxed and loose and calm. back of your neck, focus in on the back of your neck, letting go of any tension that may have been there before, and enjoying that sense of increasing comfort and release that you can experience in the back of your neck. Moving down your back and moving either side of your spine right from the top of your back all the way down to the bottom of your back, down to your lower back, and as you move up and down your spine, you can feel the muscles either side of your spine relaxing even more. And as those muscles relax, that sense of comfort starts to spread outwards from your spine into both sides of your back. the top of your back, the middle and your lower back. And as you scan gent 
gently and slowly up and down your back as the muscles in the top of your back relax and become looser the muscles in the middle of your back also seem to just almost divide from each other separating and almost melting and in your lower back there seems to be an extra special feeling of comfort that spreads into your hips so down your lower back and into your hips into the area where your coccyx are and into your buttocks and all those muscles that spread from your lower back into your hip area start to melt start to really let go to focus on your shoulders, your back and your spine will continue to let go, continue to relax, so As you focus on your shoulders, you may notice that they're already feeling really loose. They're already feeling Those muscles that move from your neck into your shoulders. Feel so soft and gentle, so smooth. and calm and the feeling in your shoulders seems to spread deep into your shoulders that sense of relaxation, not just traveling deeply into your muscles, but also relaxing the bones, and moving all the way to underneath your arms. Relaxing that whole area between the tops of your shoulders and underneath your arms. Healing you feel so relaxed and comfortable in your shoulders. 
which sends that deep healing message into your arms. And you may feel almost as if your arms are not even there because they're so relaxed so deeply relaxed so spreading all the way down your arms to your elbows including your elbows circumference spread all the way into your wrists, your forearms and your wrists, feeling so heavy, yet at the same time so light and gentle Focus in now on your hands, a sense of real peace it just seems to feel so familiar relax deeply feels so 
your fingertips. attention to the front of your body, so comfortable. to your legs muscles in your thighs, your knees, so muscles and your shins completely
so peaceful. So calm. go of everything so I'm going to start counting down now from 20 down to 1 You can imagine in a way it's like just walking down some steps. And each step, all 20 steps, and each step represents a level of comfort. Each step represents a deepening of that comfort. And the further you, you walk down those steps, the deeper and more relaxed you feel. So, starting with number 20. Eighteen. Seventeen.
16. Fourteen. Thirteen.
hate. Seven. Six.
As you focus on your eyes, we're going to count down from ten down to one. Focus in just on your eyes. 
your eyelids, the muscles around your eyes, your eyeballs themselves, that whole area that makes up your eye. As we count down from ten down to one, whilst focusing on your eyes, you will become twice as relaxed with each number counting down. you may find that all you want to do is just drift off to sleep and if that's what you want then just allow yourself to do that Focusing on your eyes, I'm going to begin counting down from ten down to one. Right now, ten.
So counting down from ten to one, ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four. Three, two, one. And maybe that was a bit too quick in order to relax. Maybe it's a bit too fast for you to notice the calming of your body. Maybe even a little bit of pressure there like the 
you're counting down from 10 to 1. What do you expect me to do, man? You expect me just to go all floppy? Just because you're counting down? We could try it again. But this time, I'll go a bit slower. This time, as you focus on the whole of your body, before we focus on your legs, just notice how your body does start to feel more relaxed with every number that I count down. Ten. Nine, eight, seven, six. And just notice how how you feel generally, how your body feels. It's not necessarily even about counting down from ten to one. It's that space that you have that space between being active physically or mentally to just sitting or lying down just being there not doing anything not saying anything not needing to think about anything so it, op it opens up a space you know a bit of a space a gap and the more I count down from 10 to 1 the bigger that gap becomes so there's that gap of calmness of comfort, relaxation. It's a nice feeling. And it moves those stresses or discomforts physically or emotionally, moves them away. allows you to just slow down. So I'm going to count again from 10 down to 1 and notice that gap widening, the 
gap. And as it widens, it's almost like the the stress and attention falls into the gap. It gives you that distance, that space now. Ten. Nine. Eight. Seven. Six. Five. Four. Three, two, How does your body feel now? Can you notice the, that you're feeling calmer? Feeling more relaxed. As we now focus on your legs. Just your legs. And we're just going to start with focusing on your thighs. course it's not the most exciting thing to be doing because I'm, I'm sure like most of your body there's not a lot going on right now just focusing on the whole of your thighs the tops of your thighs the sides of your thighs, the bottoms of your thighs, your outer thighs and your inner thighs. Basically the whole of your thigh that leads into your hip. And then 
goes down to your knee joints. Now this is a big area. It's a very heavy area. It's a very strong. Probably the strongest muscles in your body are in your thighs. But I don't think we perhaps give enough attention to our thighs. Perhaps we don't acknowledge how important our thighs are to our lives. How much they actually do for us all through our lives. And it may, it may seem to sound really weird, but I think that all of our body parts, especially our thighs, need some TLC a bit of love shown a bit of acknowledgement a thank you gratitude for what our thighs do for us And I know this may sound a bit strange. Maybe you think, why am I? Surely I should be out in, in the garden hugging a tree or something. Well, it's hard to set a microphone up on a tree. That's why I'm doing this indoors. Otherwise I would be outside hugging a tree. No, I can't see the television from the tree. you move down to your knees again such an important part and I think we don't necessarily I well, speak for myself here I don't necessarily appreciate all that my knees do for me until I have a problem with my knee so occasionally if I have a Maybe I bash it or it's aching for some reason. It's then that I realise how much it does. You know, the benefit of being able to use my legs without any kind of physical discomfort is a beautiful thing that's possibly not appreciated until it's temporarily removed, you know, that comfort. But as you focus on your knees, regardless of how your knees feel, you can have that sense of gratitude and love to your knees for all that they do for you. And you can still have that attention on your thighs. And maybe notice how your thighs feel. Maybe you've noticed that they are relaxing more deeply. As you focus now on the bottoms of your legs, your shins, 
and your calf muscles and the bones between your knees and your feet incorporating of course your ankles so important you know anyone that's had even the, like the slightest sprain of an ankle knows how how much we take our ankles for granted and it's kind of strange in a way when you think that you know logically our wrists are a lot thinner than the rest of our arms which is okay doesn't can't see any problem with that because we're just picking stuff up but our ankles are so much thinner than the rest of our legs and from a physics perspective or logical even it doesn't really make sense that all this weight would ultimately be resting on your ankles then leading to your feet that thin area a thin bone yet it does so much great work supports us supports our body for a lifetime helps us to balance helps you to get around and be mobile and there's the calf muscles of course when I was younger I couldn't see the point in calf muscles it didn't seem to do anything Okay, if I walked around on tiptoes, then my calf muscles get some work. But of course that's not true. The calf muscles are being used whenever we use our legs. And your shins. There to protect your lower legs. shaped in a way almost as a protector for the bone leading of course to your ankles and your feet but we're not going to focus on your feet we're just going to focus on the legs I realize that now that I've mentioned your feet, you're probably focusing on them anyway. So maybe I should focus on your feet a little bit. You can have them in your awareness. The same as you have your thighs in your awareness, even though we haven't been focusing on your thighs for a few minutes. We've been focusing on your ankles. There's still that sensation of comfort in your thighs. And there's that movement of energy. Because the thighs hold lots of different sensations. Of course, there's the muscles, the big, strong muscles that we have in our thighs. But the skin on the outside of the thighs, as in the outside of all of our body can be very sensitive 
sensitive to the touch, sensitive to temperature. And inside your thighs, the bones, there's the muscle, there's the blood vessels, the arteries. So all this stuff, it's inside your thighs. And I guess sometimes it'd be nice if you could actually put your fingers inside your thighs and a massage. So you can massage on the outside, of course, but to be able to get deep into the muscles, and to be able to just massage inside your thighs, massaging the bones of your leg, massaging all the veins and just gently healing your thighs. And you could move down, massaging inside your knees, just massaging those bones, but with healing fingertips, spreading that healing energy deep into the joints of your knees. And of course, there's the back of your your knee, you know, the inside crease where your knee is. It's a very sensitive area. Very, feels very nice when you stroke it. That might be because it's an area that's not really touched very often. It's almost like a hidden part, that crease in your legs. It's almost like a part that has a, a sensitivity which is a little bit different. Of course it's protected by your legs. So you can imagine putting your fingers into that crease in your legs. that fold in between your legs. You can just massage with your fingertips. Imagine your fingertips going inside, massaging the muscle tissue. You can, of course, feel the, the bones of your knees healing through your fingertips. And then as you go down to your calf muscles, now that's a part I'd like to be able to really put my fingertips deep inside my calf muscles, massaging every single tissue of that muscle, healing every part. And then doing the same for my shins, massaging and gently stroking the bones, gently stroking them, healing in a loving way, because they deserve to be treated as the precious bones that they are, because our legs are so precious, as in all the other parts of our body. They're more precious than any jewel on the planet. And when you start to think about your legs in this way, it can change your perspective. It might sound a bit, a bit silly to start with, 
the idea of having love for your legs, showing appreciation for your thighs, wanting to be able to put your hands in your thighs and massage the muscles and the bones and to get your fingers deep in there releasing all tension just to show how much you care about your legs how much you care for what your legs do for you regularly your knees, your calves your ankles the strength of your ankles considering how thin they are compared to the rest of your legs especially your thighs yet they're so strong so flexible absolutely amazing things your ankles are truly a gift because of what they do for you supporting all that weight regardless of how what weight you are even if you're only eight stone it's still a lot of weight for these little ankles now I'm a lot heavier than eight stone double that yet my ankles support my body all the time although they do give off a sigh of relief when I sit down as in fact my whole legs do my feet feet also go and my toes clap they're so happy really are amazing and I know that talking about talking about your legs is probably possibly the, among the most Im, most boring things you've ever heard anyone say possibly but boring or not everything I said is true legs are amazing your legs deserve not just respect they deserve to relax deeply They deserve to take some time out of the day to just let go completely. Because the legs are so, such a most, you know, very important part of your body, when you relax your legs, the rest of your body also naturally follows in that 
journey of comfort. I can feel it in my hips. My hips feel really loose. And also my lower back as well. My lower back really feels, it feels stretched. Even though I'm just sitting in a chair and there's no stretching as far as I'm aware that I'm doing. But it's almost as if the muscles have just relaxed so much that there is a natural stretch as the tension has reduced a lot. down from 10 down to 1 and you can continue to feel wonderfully relaxed 10 9 8 7 Six, five, four, three, two, one. Relax. So I'm just going to count down from five down to one. And as I count down, if you just focus on the numbers, just the numbers, counting down, and notice how you feel in this moment as you hear the numbers counting down, knowing that those numbers counting down represents you feeling calmer not just in your body but also relaxing your mind and just notice how you feel there's nothing to do there's nothing to say there's nothing to think about Starting with number five. Four. Three. One. As you notice the gradual letting go of the tension in your body. You may also begin to notice and be aware of how your mind is starting to slow down. This is just a natural thing that happens. It's not really a special procedure. It's just natural because as you're body relaxes, your mind also starts to relax. 
And the more your mind relaxes, the more your body relaxes. It's just a continuous circle of relaxation. And there's that calmness that comes from relative quietness. You know, even even if there's background sounds, either your side or mine, it's still going to be quite calm. You know, you haven't got the television on. There's no music in the background unless you're listening to the recording with music, of course. You're very likely not going to be sitting in a room with other people. Of course you might be, but generally it's more ideal if you can do this on your own. So, no distractions. And when you stop thinking about stuff, relaxation automatically rises. A sense of comfort starts to grow. And without trying to build it up into something fantastical or something magical, this is just a natural process, something that's easy to accomplish. In fact, it's almost... You know, the sense of relaxing completely happens really when you put no effort into it. It's not something that you can really force. It's something that happens naturally. And part of the process of this recording and others is simply to allow you to take advantage of this space, this time, to just let go, to just be here, to be in tune with how you feel. Yet with the intention of wanting to relax deeply. And maybe even to fall asleep depending on what it is that you wish for yourself in this moment. As we know, relaxing is the majority of the process of falling asleep. The actual falling asleep part is the tiny bit at the end, the deeper relaxed you become, the easier you find yourself drifting. You can also, if you choose, stay focused on my voice and really enjoy the process of gradually Relaxing, 
each muscle in your body. Effortlessly. And just observing the sensation of letting go. Completely. This time I'm going to count from six down to one. And you can notice your mind calming down more with each number that you hear me say naturally feeling calm and slow and peaceful six slowed right down, sinking deeply into relaxation. As you focus on your mind, you may notice 
notice that there are some thoughts still there. Maybe some stubborn thoughts that for some reason perhaps need your attention. So what you can do is send love to those thoughts. Sprinkle those thoughts with love. Like little petals from a flower. Just sprinkle it over them. Petals filled with love towards those thoughts to let those thoughts know that you're not abandoning them you just need them you require them to just calm down slow down quiet down for now So as you focus on those remaining thoughts, as we count down this time from seven down to one, with each number, just imagine sprinkling those flower petals of love, kindness, gratitude, over those thoughts. Which will allow them to just. Melt away. And relax deeply. With every number. Those thoughts will become more. And more relaxed. Starting with number seven.
Imagine now. Notice how relaxed you're feeling in your body. We're going to focus on your hands. Because the more relaxed your hands are, the more relaxed your body and mind are. And as you focus on your hands, and your fingers. There's nothing needed to be done. There's no clenching of fists or tensing the fingers or anything like that. It's just noticing and focusing on your hands. Noticing how they feel. Because the more relaxed your hands feel, the calmer your mind feels. Noticed your mind is starting to drift. In just on your hands and fingers, allowing them to experience a real deepening of that relaxation in your hands and fingers. More and more relaxed with each number. Feel that healing and relaxing energy spreading into your hands and fingers, becoming even more relaxing.
again. Starting with number Seven. Just being here now. Nothing to think about. Nothing to do. Nothing to say. And everything just feels calmer. And this is your natural state of being. This is how you just normally feel when you take away all of that other stuff that we add. You know, things like stress and worrying and overthinking and 
anxiety, tension. Just generally thinking about stuff. When you take that away, which is what we do, what we're doing now. You're left with a real sense of peacefulness, which comes to you very quickly. Because ultimately, it's just a feeling. A feeling of comfort. Almost as if you've gone inside yourself and you've found a special place where everything is peaceful. A place where you can feel relaxed and your natural sense of comfort. A place where you can be you. Where you can accept yourself for who you are. A place where you're not trying to please anybody else, ever. A place where you can actually... Not just love yourself, but in some ways, more importantly, you can like yourself. Appreciate who you are. And that sense of gratitude is in the air all around. It's also a place where you can actually feel the healing energy soaking into your body. Healing energy soaking into your body. That healing energy spreads through your veins, traveling to each and every single part of your body. And you start to realize that actually that healing energy it's not just entered into your brain. It's become part of your brain. And that spinal fluid is now mixed with healing energy. Not just allowing you to feel so much more relaxed and healthy in this moment. But also, you start to realize that actually what's happening now with that healing, relaxing energy spreading through your body is actually changing your life. It's actually changing the way you're going to feel, not just now, but tomorrow and the next day. As your health improves, Not just your physical health, but your mental health. 
things that used to bother you in the past, for some reason, no longer have the effect that they used to. Because something has changed deep within you. Maybe things that used to cause you to feel anger no longer have that power to control you the way they seem to be able to before. As you realize that you're the one who decides what affects you. You're the one who decides to feel relaxed and calm when you choose to enjoy noticing these natural developments of healing continuing to grow and improve your life day by day. Including, of course, your ability to relax so much easier and sleep in is the most natural thing in the world to you. Because falling asleep is something that you've done so many times in your life. And you know that you were born, as we all were, with the ability to fall asleep naturally. We were born with that ability to just drift off into a deep healing sleep. Even when we're kids, sometimes we'll fall asleep when we don't even want to. We try to <laughs> stay awake. Maybe it's a birthday in the morning or it's Christmas or holiday or something we look forward to. We don't want to go to sleep. But the more we want to stay awake, the more we just start to drift. And the more you fight drifting, the more you try and stop yourself from drifting asleep the deeper and stronger that drifting becomes. Because we're born not just with the need to relax deeply and to naturally fall asleep, but it's our birthright. It's part of our DNA. And sometimes as we get older in life, perhaps at times we have forgotten that relaxing completely is not only a wonderfully pleasant experience, It's also really easy. It's 
very, very easy to let go. Because that's all it is, it's just deciding to let go. And when you press the play button on my recordings, you have given permission for my voice to relax you. When you press that play button, you have given me permission for my words to affect you in a positive, only a positive way. Opening up to useful and healing suggestions that can have such an amazing effect on how you feel right now. as well as those changes that continue long after the recording ends, those changes within you that continue to flourish and grow, transforming your life in a positive, beautiful way, allowing you to move forward in your life in the direction that you choose for yourself. And this feeling this feeling that you can experience of safety, comfort, calmness. It just feels so nice. It's such a healthy place to be and that positivity grows within you each and every day moving forward you're going to find that you're more relaxed physically and in your mind is more relaxed. And it's not that you're thinking slower. It's just that your mind will be less clogged up with unnecessary negativity. Because from now on, your mind rejects negativity. From now on, you're going to start noticing when negativity arises. You can just say stop. Stop. And that negativity will 
turn around and leave you alone. Stop. And that negativity would disappear. And as you notice that you feel way more relaxed than you probably expected. You can now congratulate yourself because you're the person that has done this. You are the one that has opened your mind up to the simple facts that you can feel more relaxed in your body and in your mind. You've opened your mind up to the birthright of being able to just Fall asleep easily when you choose. And that's a nice feeling, don't you think? It feels nice, doesn't it? To feel calm all that healing energy spreading through your body and your mind. To spend time in that, that special place where negativity can no longer enter. Negativity is banned, it's barred, it's not allowed entry. Doesn't it doesn't des doesn't deserve to be here, doesn't belong here. Negativity has no place in your life. makes room for more comfort, more healing, more relaxation, more peace. Feels nice, doesn't it? To just let go of everything. And I'm going to count down now from twenty down to one. You can continue to relax. If you choose, you can drift to sleep. With every number, you hear me say, you can feel twice as relaxed. Or if you choose, you can feel twice as sleepy. Now. Twenty. Nine. 
routine. Eighteen. Seventeen. Sixteen. Fifteen. Eight, seven, six, five. This is your time to just take a break. Your time to relax, to allow your mind to slow down. To give yourself permission to take a break from everything. And you're the only person that can make that decision. You're the only person that can actually tell your mind. Just relax. To just take some time off. So that you can focus on your body getting in touch with how you feel physically and in the process of this body scan where you focus on different parts of your body Those parts that you focus on and observe, even though you're not purposely requesting for those parts of your body to relax, 
it's kind of expected. You expect, when you listen to my voice, to feel more relaxed, naturally. Because when you're listening to me, your attention is focused on my words. And as my words guide you to focus on those parts of your body. Your focus increases. Which actually calms your mind. And when your mind calms down. body relaxes. And when your body calms down, your mind relaxes. started to focus on your body, you can already feel that healing energy spreading through your body, pushing out stress and tension. healing all the parts of your body, including your skin, your bones, your blood, all of your organs inside your body, all of the muscles, all of the fat, all of everything, every hair on your body, is filled with that healing energy. And when your brain fills with that healing energy, the feeling of comfort relaxation increases deeply increases in a way that starts to feel perhaps a bit drowsy because it's not needed and it may start to drift That's what's needed. So if you're listening to this and what you need is deep relaxation, that's what you'll get. If what you need is to fall asleep naturally and easily and your mind drifts, that's also 
Because by pressing that play button on the podcast and listening to me, you give permission for your body and your mind. In fact, you give the command to your body and your mind to relax. deeply and to drift off to sleep if that's what you want or need and as I focus on the different parts of your body in on a different part of your body and then you may find yourself drifting but you don't realize you're drifting until you stop drifting and you're alert again to my voice focusing different part of your body starts to relax even deeper because that drifting is basically you already in the sleep zone sleep and that's the last you remember until you wake up in your own time when you experience the right amount of sleep for you because when you do and if you do sleep, it's extremely pleasant, so relaxing, so deep, healing sleep, and it feels so nice. into your own body and mind as you, f- as you feel that healing energy spreading through you relaxing you so deeply relaxing you so
chest. Your stomach. Your back. Your spine. Let's focus again on parts of your body. Focusing this time on your forehead. Now on your mouth, your lips, your tongue, the whole of your mouth. Focus in on your fingers. Maybe you could move your fingers a little bit so you can focus on each one individually. Both hands. And even though as you focus on both of your hands now, they almost seem to just melt into one. Where does your right hand start and your left hand end? It's almost as if they just mix together. Focusing on your knees. Just noticing how your knees feel. Now focusing on your elbow. Focus in on both of your elbows. Just observing the feeling of your elbows. in 
physical sensations in your ankles. Noticing now your toes on both of your feet. Being aware of how your toes feel. to sin how your entire body feels noticing Letting go Letting go Letting go Of everything go letting go letting go I'm going to start now and I'd like you just first of all just to see yourself lying down on that massage table, lying on your front, your head is supported, your arms are supported and you feel comfortable and the breathing is really easy and you feel you feel confident 
in how you look as well. So there's none of that issue of body problems or shyness because I'm a professional and this is a therapy session. So none of that stuff matters whatsoever. This is about you. This is about how you feel and how you can enjoy that sense of comfort and relaxation that comes from letting go and allowing my hands and my fingers to relax you by massaging your body. So I want to start off just by placing my hands on the back of your head, just gently, just so you can feel what my hands feel like really on you, so you can maybe feel the warmth of my hands on the back of your head, and I'm going to move my hands to the side of your head, not pressing but just holding there very gently maybe over your ears and a little bit on your face just so you can feel my hands so you can become accustomed to them and now put my hands on the back of your head again and gently let them slide down onto the back of your neck. You can feel my hands gently stroking the back of your neck to start with. Just so you can get used to the the feeling of my hands on your skin. Get accustomed to it. Realise that you're safe and it's all good. It's all fine. And I'm going to start gently massaging the muscles in the back of your neck. both hands now this is a very trusting situation really because our necks are so fragile and to have someone have their hands around your neck in that way can sometimes be problematic for people which is why massages are quite good because it allows you to relax and to get in touch with trust, to feel peaceful and calm. And there's a massage the sides of your neck gently. Moving from the bottom of your neck, which would be sort of near where your shoulders start, I guess, all the way up to your jaw, your ears kind of area, that side of your neck. Of course, is a lot longer than the front of your neck. Massaging the, the back of your neck. Especially that area where perhaps we hold tension. And as that area is massaged, you can actually feel 
a sense of release in the back of your neck. And maybe you can breathe it out as well. Notice how it feels. Notice how you feel. Then moving down to that area between your neck and your shoulders. That muscly area. Starting to massage that area on both sides. I mean, this would be the area that a lot of people would massage if they were going to give you like a shoulder massage. Even that's not technically the shoulders, but it's all the muscles that lead to the shoulders from the neck. And again, that can hold tension and stress. And when massaged, sometimes a nice deep massage is useful. And you decide how deep that massage is. And just allow my knuckles just to dig in to get to those muscles and to really relax them. All the time being firm yet gentle with you. And just stroking down that area to your actual shoulders. Moving to the muscles of your shoulders. And maybe initially just pulling up the shoulders a little bit off the table. Just to give you a little bit of a stretch. But very gently. And you've got the muscles at the front of your shoulders, the sides and the back. Again, this is a part that can really take quite a bit of pressure, quite a bit of uh, needing, if if you wish, to really release the tension, to really get into those muscles, and you can let your fingers in there. And it can feel really nice. Sometimes just being stroked gently or being massaged quite strongly can all be beneficial to the relaxation. Of the muscles in your shoulders. Now as we move down your arms, we do one arm at a time, starting with your right arm. What I'll do is I'll just lift your arm up, just hold it to the side of you. Don't worry, it'll still be attached. And I just massage the tops of your arms. All the way down to your forearms. Into your wrists.
gently massaging that part, the softer part which is the under part of the arm, which leads to the crease in your elbow, the inside, it's much more sensitive skin. Sometimes just having that stroked can feel really nice, pleasurable and relaxing. Now moving down to your right hand. Just holding your hand in both of my hands. Just pressing gently on the back of your hand and stretching your fingers ever so lightly. At the same time Pressing down and massaging each finger. And then starting to massage the palms of your hand. Just turning the hand gently. Stretching it gently. And actually having your hand held can really be an emotional experience sometimes, even if it is with a stranger, someone you don't know very well, like a massage person or a therapist maybe, because it's intimate. You can feel nice, and you can feel safe. And as I put that right arm back down where it was, I'm going to do the same with your left arm, exactly the same. Massaging the muscles in your arm all the way down to your wrist. Stroking the inside of your arm. Just being gentle or as firm as you require. And then massaging your left hand. Stretching the fingers gently. Massaging the palm of your left hand. so, so relaxing. So comforting. Now just rest your left arm back down. Start to massage your back, the biggest part of your body. 
starting at the top, starting again where we already be at being, that area at the top, in between your shoulders, near your neck, going back, massaging that area again, but this time moving downwards. Making a downward stroke to the middle of your back, working from the outside inwards, so massaging the your back, but the the outsides of your back, the parts where your arms would maybe rest against almost the part that connects your front to your back and just massaging down firmly but gently as firm as you want, moving down and then moving across a little bit and moving all the way down again, being very gentle, yet firm as you choose. And eventually we get to the spine. We can massage the muscles on either side of your spine from the top of your neck all the way down to your lower back. We can do that a few times. Sometimes people use the knuckle or the, you know, two fingers and just go either side of the spine almost just push down and go all the way down to the bottom of the spine each time releasing tension and opening up the body stretching your body so that you feel more relaxed but at the same time, rejuvenated. And now I'm going to move to one side, to your right side. And from the bottom of your ribs to your pelvis. I'm going to massage that area of your back. I'll stretch over the other side and I'll pull the muscles gently and massage and push from one end, that side, all the way to my side. Or to the middle, in fact, to where your spine is. Massaging that side of your spine the opposite side to where I'm standing. It's almost like kneading bread. There's that big area which is firm, yet lots there to massage. Potentially one of the most important places to actually have a massage. Because you really feel it. You really feel the release and the pleasure of having your lower back massaged. It releases so much from your body that's not useful. Starting a healing process which will continue long after this recording is over.
massaging this part of your body not only feels really good for you, but it's actually fun to do. Because it is, as I said, like kneading bread. It's a part that you can really get a hold of and really massage deeply. If that's your choice. Then I'm going to move over to the other side of your body and do the same with the opposite part of your lower back. Kneading and massaging from your sides all the way to the middle of your back where your spine is. Pressing and kneading. Firm and gentle at the same time. It feels so releasing. This mixture of pleasure, comfort, release, calmness, relaxation, all mixed together. Plus there's that feeling from your stomach as it's being stretched. Even though you're in your stomach now, you can feel it being stretched because that whole area is connected to your stomach. Now we're going to move or we'll move further up to your top of your body. And I'm going to do the same, this time starting with your upper back, put my hands forward over and mass massage in that area up to your spine, from the side of your body up to your spine. So some of that massage area, the muscle tissue, uh, or whatever fatty tissue even will be possibly from your chest because it's all connected the chest and the back connect together I'm going to be massaging and just pulling some of that skin from your side up and massaging that area of your upper back all the way to your spine. And then I'll move down a bit and I'll continue with the middle of your back doing exactly the same thing. As gentle or as deep as you choose. Now I'll move all the other side again and do the exact same thing with the top of your back on the other side from pretty much underneath your arm area really to your spine. Then continuing that all the way down, including your lower, your middle of your back. Now I'm going to go to your thighs, the backs of your thighs, and the sides of your thighs. Starting with your right leg, massaging the back and the sides of your thighs, gently and firmly, 
There's a lot of muscles there. It's an area that can be very tense at times and maybe needs a little bit more pressure than the rest of the body. That's up to you. You can gently stroke the back of your legs where, you know, opposite your knee joint or underneath your knee joint. It's a very sensitive, gentle area. And working down to your calf muscles. Massaging your calf muscles thoroughly and deeply if you choose. Using both hands and fingers digging deep. To your ankles in the back of your back of your ankles just gently massage in that area maybe lifting the leg and stretching it a little bit Moving to the right foot. Massaging the bottom of your feet and the sides of your feet. Gently but firm enough so they don't tickle. And just allow the pleasure that you get from having your feet massaged to just overtake you. As I continue to massage your feet, the bottoms of your feet, the sides, your arches, your heel, and you can put a lot of pressure into your heel and it feels amazing, yet the arches need to be a bit more gentle, stretching your toes gently. And massaging the bottoms of your toes with my fingers, each one individually. Moving over to the left leg to do exactly the same thing. Starting at the top of the thighs, working the back of the thighs and the sides, massaging deeply and gently that whole area, working all the way down, and this is an area that maybe you could like to spend more time relaxing and massaging. So perhaps if you wanted I could make a future recording where I spend more time on one particular area. As you move down to your calf muscles. Massaging your calf muscles firmly and gently. Moving down your ankles.
ankle into your feet, massaging the backs of your feet, bottoms of your feet, stretching your toes and massaging each toe individually, and that feeling of pleasure and release that you experience when you're having your feet massaged feels really good. Now, as you turn over in your mind, laying on your back, Just going to start again at your neck area. And your shoulders. Just to get back in touch with that area. And as we move up. clean my hands, make them more fresh, because now I'm going to massage your face, gently, starting off with your forehead, if your eyes are closed, and I can just stretch your eyes a little bit. Pushing up on your eyebrows. And just massaging around your scalp. Massaging down your cheeks. Around your ears. Into your jaw. Gently. The sides of your neck, your chin, and just moving down from your neck down to your chest. Starting by massaging the very top of your chest, where the collarbone is, either side of the collarbone. And just massaging the whole of the chest. chest around, because it's quite a large area, you can move from one side to the next, moving my hands from underneath pretty much where your arms are. Stretching up, stretching some of the muscles of your back in the process. Moving up over your chest. And then moving down again. to just massage gently and slide down towards your stomach 
starting in the middle of your chest and then gradually my hands moving apart and massaging and sliding at the same time moving down to just below your rib cage. Massaging up again, giving your chest all the attention that it needs to feel completely relaxed. Remembering that I'm also going to be focusing on your sides as well an area that really doesn't get much attention but feels really good when it's massaged just stroking my hands down the sides of your body or just below your arms all the way down to your hips Now, moving to your stomach area, I'm going to stand one side of you like I did when I did your lower back. I'm going to do a similar process of just stretching the muscles from your side gently, massaging. one side to the next, moving that whole area from below your ribs all the way down to below your belly button, I'm going to move around to the other side of you and repeat that. process of relaxing deeply, calmly, you feel loose, you feel free, and there's something about having your stomach massaged that's different from any other part, because we do have a tendency of holding different kind of stress in our stomachs that we may not be aware of. As I now massage your stomach, the front of your stomach, making circles around your belly button. Then going the other way around. There's a gentleness and a freedom that comes from feeling how you're feeling. As I now move down the tops of your thighs muscles, massaging them, and I can do this two legs at the same time, pressing down, massaging deeply those muscles in your thighs, the front of your thighs. And moving down to your knees, gently Massaging your knees, sliding down your shins, putting pressure on either side of your shin, gently, softly, but firmly, moving 
and down to your ankles. Stroking the tops of your feet. And then with each foot in each hand, just gently massaging the whole of the foot. The top, the bottom, your heel, your ankle, your toes. Massaging every part of your feet. It feels so good just to let go and enjoy the process. Enjoy feeling so deeply relaxed. much comfort and so many feelings that come just from touching your skin. And you can just lie there for as long as you choose. Enjoying the feeling of deep comfort from being massaged by me. Enjoy the feeling deep. going to do is blow out some candles in your mind. There are going to be a hundred candles. And you're going to blow each one out individually, one by one, starting at a hundred as I count down. All the way down to one. And each time I say a number. You can imagine that candle in front of you. And I'd like you to actually physically gently blow that candle out. Just so it's not a big Below, it's just a gentle, and that candle will extinguish. And then I'll say the next number as we move down, and you can just blow that one out as well. As we move down the numbers, you'll find yourself feeling more and more relaxed. And if you need to sleep, you'll also find yourself becoming incredibly tired and sleepy. 
In fact, you may struggle to blow out all 100 of these candles. As you feel more and more deeply relaxed, more and more deeply tired. down, the more your mind starts to drift, and you may find that you stop listening to me after a while. there may be background sounds where you are, you'll be aware of those sounds at the moment. You may start to just not even notice them at all because they're unimportant. Where I am, I've got the sounds of the birds. There's Horace the pigeon likes to say hello sometimes, and there's the odd plane that goes by, maybe traffic and trains in the distance, but none of that seems important whatsoever. you blow out, the less important anything is, the more candles you blow out, the further you seem to move away. sounds and from general day to day stuff seems to just move away on its own as you feel number that you hear me say and then you blow that candle out too <sighs> so easy So simple, all 
going to start by introducing the first candle, which is a hundred. First candle, which is one hundred. When you blow that candle out, you'll find immediately a slight change in how you feel. as well as a real sense of positivity growing within you. Relaxation and sleepiness expanding. Starting with one hundred, blow out that candle now. Ninety nine. Six.
receive one. Jesus.
Seventy eight candle seventy seven candle 
you want. Sixty four. Sixty. Fifty-seven. 
56. Candle fifty four. Candle fifty two. Fifty one. Forty
48. Forty-seven. to
total thirty seven.
Seven.
two, twenty two. Seventeen.
let go of all of those thoughts, worries, concerns about the past, thoughts about the future and even things you've been thinking about today. Just let it all go because none of it is useful in this moment. This is your opportunity to just focus on feeling relaxed, allowing yourself to get in touch with that natural sense of peace that we all have within us. It's available for everyone. It just sometimes takes a little bit of effort to set up the right time and place in order for you to just let go. Because when you do decide to let go and relax, that's what your body starts to do. Because you've chosen, you've chosen to just allow your body to unwind and your mind starts to slow down. And it's a nice feeling. It's a nice feeling at the beginning just to know that you have chosen to decide to, to relax deeply and because you've made that decision your body will just follow suit because sometimes all the muscles in your body need is just permission from you to relax Because so often we're busy, we're going from here to there, we're walking around and we're doing stuff. And the body doesn't have any time or space to really relax deeply. So it kind of waits for you to lead the way. Waits for your permission. And when you do give your permission, when you give the say-so, when you say, okay, it's time for your body to let go completely and relax totally. Your body just follows. It's all like a breath of relief. Oh, good, I can now relax. That feeling at the end of a day, of a very physical day that you may experience in the past, where you get home and you just sit down on a chair, maybe you kick your shoes off and, oh, oh it feels so nice. Knowing that you don't have to get up again a little while at least and if you choose you can just sit there for maybe an hour or two and it feels blissful and just by sitting down like that your body knows that it's time to relax your body has been given permission from you because it's a mindset in your mind you're prepared to let go 
observe everything and just completely allow all the stress of your body to evaporate. Any tensions can just gradually vanish. It's almost like magic, really. Because that sense of relaxation in your body is a very natural state. It's not something unusual. It may feel unusual when you first start to relax if you, if you haven't really spent a lot of time focusing and giving yourself this space to let go completely and relax. It may seem almost alien, but it isn't. It's actually the most natural thing in the world to let go completely, to relax totally. The most natural thing in the world to allow yourself to feel really calm in your mind. And it is almost like a literal unwinding. It's like you press a button and all the tension just releases. And it's like a wheel, like a cog, like the inside of a clock just unwinding. And it's almost like you could see the, the little wind-up knob that's used just going the opposite way that you'd use to wind it up. And the energy, that frenetic, stressful energy, gradually winding down, losing its power, losing its strength. As the sense of relaxation becomes stronger and deeper. And you may find the more relaxed you feel that your mind starts to wander. Maybe you seem to stop listening to me for a while and your mind goes somewhere else and then you realize you're listening to me again. And that was just your mind drifting to sleep, which is quite natural, because sometimes when we're stressed and tense, we not, may not actually be aware of what we need, what we physically or emotionally need in this moment. But when you allow your body and mind to relax completely and you let go of all thoughts, concerns, worries, ideas, all letting them go, allowing them to drop onto the floor. You start to Get in touch with the feelings of such relaxation. It feels so nice to be in touch with the calmness of the different body parts as they become looser and looser. breathing seems easier and more natural, effortless, as that cool air enters 
breathe through your mouth or nose into your lungs. Breathing in comfort and relaxation. And then just breathing out any excess remaining tension or stress from every part of your body and mind. As you start to focus on your mind, maybe you notice that things are, have come to a standstill, or maybe just much, much slower than before, because your mind is not really needed when listening to my voice. which allows your mind to relax just as deeply as your body. And that synchronicity between the relaxation of your body and uh, relaxation of your mind lets you know that feeling completely calm, loose and relaxed, really is a great healing experience for you, and has so many positive benefits for your body, your mind and your life to be able to let go of everything and to relax completely in all parts of your body and mind. Even your bones are relaxed. Muscles are relaxed. Even the skin that covers your body is relaxed. Every starts to feel the benefit of this healing relaxation. And as you focus from the inside of your scalp where your brain is, you can start to realize and notice the benefit of your brain relaxing deeply. And as your brain continues to relax, it sends those messages to the rest of your body and your mind to really even more deeply relaxing even more completely letting go of any remaining thoughts or concerns they're no longer necessary in 
this moment, in this moment of deep relaxation and calmness, filling your brain with deep, concentrated healing, calming, relaxing every part of your brain. So loose and comfortable, so relaxed and peaceful, your brain feels so light and so healthy, and that sense of deep deep comfort really does allow you to enjoy those ever increasing sensations of comfort that are spreading throughout your body. Relaxing each and every muscle of your body even deeper, even deeper, much more deeper than before. in your mind, feeling so peaceful and calm, so very, very peaceful in every part of your body. Letting go of everything, everything so peaceful and calm, so relaxed with every second. You feel deeper, deeper, relaxed, deeper and deeper, relaxed. Calm. 
Letting go everything. I'm going to do a body scan, focusing on firstly how you feel in your body, not trying to change how you feel, not trying to relax not trying to move away from any discomfort or stress or tension, but just accepting, observing and accepting how you feel in the different parts of your body, just allowing yourself to be exactly as you are, to notice, to get in touch with how you actually feel in this moment. So we're going to start off by focusing on your hands. Just be aware of your hands. I'd like you to move your hands around. Just Maybe move your fingers a little bit, open and closing your hands very gently, just so that you can get in touch with how your hands and your fingers feel. Very, very slow movements. Focusing now on your feet. And if you can, just do kind of an equivalent with your feet as you've just done with your hands. Maybe turning your ankles moving your feet around, moving your toes gently, but only very gently and very slowly, noticing how your feet feel in this moment. Focusing now on your eyes. I'd like you to just focus on your eyelids. Maybe you can open and close your eyes a couple of times to really get in touch with how you feel when you do close your eyes. The muscle changes in your eyes when you do close them, maybe raising your eyebrows, which stretches the tops of your eyes, perhaps squinting your eyes, scrunching up your eyes, just so you can really get in touch with all aspects of how your eyes feel right now. Now focus in on your thighs. And I just ask you to gently tense your thighs just very, very gently, just enough so you can become more attuned to the physical sensation of your upper legs, the front of your thighs and the backs of your thighs. Noticing and observing how your 
thighs feel right now. Focus to the back of your neck, just noticing the back of your neck, the muscles, and of course they lead to the side of your neck, they also lead to the top of your back, which lead to your shoulders. So as you focus on the back of your neck, maybe you can move your head gently upwards as if you were looking up, maybe moving your head down as if you were looking down, perhaps moving your head side to side, right to left. Only very slowly and very gently, not trying to force anything. It has to be very, very gentle, just so that you can be more in touch with the feelings, with the sensations, the physical sensations of how the back of your neck feels right now. As we now focus on the tops of your arms, the parts where your biceps and your triceps are between your elbow and your shoulders. As you focus on those parts, the tops of your arms, you may like to just tense them very, very gently and slowly, so you're not straining or putting any pressure whatsoever on your arms, it's just so that you can gain more of a sense of how your upper arms are feeling in this moment, and just noticing as you gently, very gently and slowly tighten the muscles and then let go. Notice how the tops of your arms feel right now. As we now focus on your stomach, the area, the lower abdomen area below your belly button, moving all the way down to your hips, just above your groin, maybe you're able to tense these muscles in that area very, very gently. And slowly, if that is a difficult thing to do, maybe you can just move your body, 
pushing your stomach up, maybe moving a little bit to the side, using your hips, just so that you can get more in tune with how your lower abdomen area is feeling in this moment. Just noticing the physical sensations of your lower abdomen. As we move your attention in your lips and inside your mouth, your teeth, your gums, your tongue. Just noticing how your tongue and your mouth feel. your mouth, moving it to your left, maybe pressing it gently against the side of your mouth, and then to the right, gently to the side of your mouth, perhaps pressing up against the, the top of your mouth, and then down gently against the bottom of your mouth, always very slowly and very, very gentle, so that you can focus on your wrists, and I'm going to ask you to maybe just rotate your wrists by moving your hands in a circular motion, very Gently and slowly, just so that you can feel the sensations that you are currently experiencing. Experiencing in your wrists, perhaps moving your hands up and down, again very, very gently and slowly. 
to observe your lower back. And that back part is just above your hips, where your coccyx are. also really does include the sides of your body, because those muscles are very much connected. As those muscles also move into your hip area, connecting to your buttocks, the sides of your hips. physically able to do so, maybe you can very gently just move your body ever so slightly, very slowly, from side to side. Just enough for you to gauge how you feel in your lower back. Perhaps you could even. physical sensations of your lower back. As we now move your attention chin all the way up to near where your ears are, the whole of your jaw, and you can just, if it's okay to do so, gently Open your mouth, not wide, no stretching, just very gently and slowly opening your mouth and then closing your mouth very gently.
Noticing now your chest area. You don't need to do anything to move your chest because it moves every time you breathe. This part of your body moves also every time you breathe. You may not notice it. Usually, as you observe.
to your hip area, your buttocks, your groin, those muscles and those bones in your midsection. Just noticing how your hips feel right now. You can very, very gently. side to side very gently and slowly very Everything starts to slow down. Including the thoughts in your mind and your mind itself just starts to gradually it doesn't have to be instant, but just gradually starting to, it's almost like time is stretching. It's a slower pace to maybe what you're used to in your day-to-day -day life. It's a slower movement of energy. Very small movements which make up the larger movements which is always the case. And when you move your hand, it might seem like it's one movement, but it's lots of minute different muscles moving in accordance with each other. And what happens in this space that we're sharing is we move from that big movement into those smaller movements. Starting to focus on how your body feels, but not just as a whole, not just, oh, I'm feeling this way, I'm feeling stressed or tense or 
I'm feeling relaxed and calm. I'm feeling this way, I'm feeling that way. Starting to notice that your body begins to present to you small feelings around your body. Small physical sensations in your legs, whether pleasurable or not. Maybe resisting the temptation to label them or to judge them, those feelings. Just thinking them, thinking about them as just being neutral. Just feelings. Not being particularly concerned, but just noticing what your body is telling you. Feelings in your arms. Instead of feeling the whole of the arm, maybe notice those individual feelings. All those different muscles and the skin, the hairs of your arms, the all the internal parts of your arms, the veins. The bones. Just being aware of maybe your elbow on your right arm has a certain feeling Maybe your left wrist also has its own individual physical sensation. What about your forearm on your right arm? Your right forearm. There may not be any particular feeling that you could even give a name to. It may not feel like anything other than just a feeling. You know, it's there. The feelings in your shoulders. Perhaps your shoulders, when you think about them, kind of almost like they're the same, you know, the same feeling. Almost like your both of your shoulders are just one thing. But of course they're not. And when you focus on your left shoulder and then on your right shoulder, maybe you find that you move the muscles a little bit, maybe tense the muscles gently. Noticing the difference in each shoulder. your lower back the 
the left side of your lower back and the right side of your lower back. course that connection to your buttocks and to your hips and also moving up into the middle of your back and sometimes like right now actually I want to focus on that part. I want to focus on my buttocks. And then I focused on my, the middle of my back. It almost felt like the muscles in my lower back were being stretched. Very gently. But just stretched a little bit. Even though I wasn't doing anything to try to stretch your lower back it just seemed to happen the feeling of very gently stretching your lower back comes along that feeling in your chest just noticing what sensations you are experiencing in your chest right now And there's so much of the chest. Obviously there's the collarbone leading to the chest. You've got the chest bone. You've got the muscles in your chest. And of course, if you're female, there's possibly the breasts. If you're male, you've got the different, well mine aren't that different these days, but there may be more muscles at the top of the chest, but at the side, underneath, it's pretty much the same, whether you're a man or a woman, there's muscles there, muscles that stretch out to your back as well as breast tissue which stretches and moves into your back. So just being aware of your chest. Being with whatever feeling there is in your chest and what I notice that I focus on my chest I feel it in my my back my upper back I mean, I guess the obvious reason would be because, you know, I'm breathing in. And it stretches my chest and my back at the same time. Yeah, it feels... It feels okay. doesn't feel 
a little bit of pain in my right chest. A little bit, not pain, but a little discomfort, maybe stiffness, possibly. I don't know. I notice my shoulders are also wanting to flex for some reason. I think that's probably part of my upper back. That connection between my shoulders and my upper back. Because I can move my shoulders and stretch the muscles in my back. Moving the shoulders backwards or up, which then moves the, I think it's the scapulas in your back. It feels quite nice actually. good thing about this is you can, if you want to, you can just flex or stimulate the various muscles in your body gently in order to get more of a sense of how they feel. And when you're relaxing, when you do tense a muscle and you let it go and you let it relax, it relaxes way more than it would normally. But you have to feel that you're able to do that. There's no point doing it if there's a, a, an issue with a per part of your body. You need to be gentle with yourself at all times when relaxing deeply. It's important to be kind to yourself. As you notice your mind, how much has your mind slowed down since we started this recording? How calm and peaceful is your mind right now? With nothing to think about and just my voice to listen to because you know the intention Behind this recording is relaxation. At the very least, for you to feel more relaxed at the end of the recording than you did at the beginning. At the very least, for your mind to slow down as your body continues to relax. Because that's what you want to happen. That's what you expect. to happen. For a relax.
relaxation to fill your body maybe calm in your mind to the point of boredom when you start maybe to drift away Almost as if you're moving further away from your body and your mind. Just leaving that there. Kind of like in a, an escape pod in a spaceship and movie space movie, you know, when they get into that little pod and it sends them <laughs> far away from the spaceship. Safe to dream. Continue to relax. Focusing on the feeling of those individual parts of your body that are relaxing one by one. find that every now and then you realize that you weren't listening to my voice because your mind started to imagine 
something different maybe you started to almost move into some kind of a dreamy state and then you become aware of my voice again and even though you may want to focus on my voice you may also wish to allow your mind to just drift naturally into that space of comfort and safety as you feel more comfort spreading through your body like a warm blanket covering you gently keeping your body at just the perfect temperature and even if you can hear background sounds they just don't seem to matter anymore. There's that sense of peace spreads through your mind. Like a gentle breeze yet strong enough to blow away all negativity strong enough to remove from your mind any anxiety or stress that was there before blow away any other thoughts or feelings that just don't fit with the sense of relaxation is filling your body and your mind and as you focus on your mind you can count down from ten down to one and with each number you hear your mind will become slightly just slightly so from 10 down to 9 just a slight movement from 9 down to 8 just another small change in how you feel Eight down 
one to seven. That feeling is a, is a gap, almost like a gap that starts to get wider. The gap between those feelings that you used to have in your mind compared to the feelings you have that are growing now. Feelings of comfort and security and confidence. And that gap becomes wider. Eight down to seven, seven down to six. And when you get to five, your mind will start to have a certain physical sensation. Almost like there's a magnet outside of your head suck in the tension and the stress and any remaining feelings that you don't want sucking them out through your skull and then down to four you can start to really experience that sense of not just emptiness but space a place full of fresh air a place where you can stretch it's almost as if as you go down to four and three your mind is expanding with this sense Peace and tranquility growing as it moves down to two. When you get to one, your mind just feels exactly how you want to feel. It's almost perfect feeling maybe a a sensation that you'd like to keep a place that's safe where nothing can affect you at all stay in that that space of comfort and confidence confident in your own ability to create this space and this feeling of comfort within your own mind just by counting from 10 down to 1 And this is something that you can do yourself when you're on your own. A time when you can maybe sit down, maybe just for a few minutes. Close your eyes. And just count slowly from ten down to one and re-experience these feelings in your mind and when you feel that way in your mind your body copies your mind And that 
that feeling is spread through your spine and your nervous system into every part of your body, travels through your bloodstream, healing and relaxing every particle of your existence. Can, we can practice this a few times before the end of the recording and then you can practice on your own and each time you count from ten down to one the feelings of comfort Calmness and deep, deep relaxation become stronger and deeper. Filling your mind and your brain with these positive chemicals spread throughout your body, relaxing you so quickly, relaxing your whole body and mind so very, very easily, just by counting from ten down to one. So we're going to do it now. I'm going to count from ten down to one, and I'd like you to repeat the number after me. So when I say ten, you can just repeat to yourself ten. Just notice, be aware of how you feel. in your mind and your body. Then when I say nine, you can repeat to yourself, nine. Again, noticing the increase in comfort and Calmness in your mind and in your body. The same when I say eight. When I say seven. Six. When I say five. Four. When I say three, two, and lastly when I say one, you can repeat that number now of course when you do this on your own without listening to me, you can say the numbers at whatever speed that you feel is necessary for you, so you can adapt, so if you feel you want to say the numbers 10 down to 1 faster than I do, then go ahead and do that. Or if you feel when you do it yourself that you'd like to have more, more space between the numbers. Maybe 
take a lot longer to get from 10 all the way down to 1. That's your choice also to do. count from 10 down to 1 when I get to 1 that will be the end of this recording unless of course you're listening with music then the music will continue
20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, Seven, six, five, four, three, two. One. Now open your eyes. Noticing how you physically feel. Having counted down from 20 to 1. Allowing stress and tension to leave through your fingertips and your toes. And as you focus on your fingertips, maybe they feel a little bit tingly, which is, I suppose, quite understanding considering the tension has been exiting your body through your fingertips. So now we're going to count from 20 down to 1 again. This time, you're going to feel relief of tension and stress, any anxiety that you may have. Leaving through your stomach. Just leaving through your stomach, almost as if it's just releasing the whole of your stomach from your navel to just above your chest or below your chest rather. So surrounding your belly button area, that whole area, you can feel the tension of your body, whatever's left, just releasing from that area. And you may notice that your stomach will become very relaxed as I count down from 20 down to 1. Now, 20, 19, 18. Seventeen, sixteen, fifteen, fourteen, thirteen.
can open your eyes again if you choose or you can just keep them closed because it feels relaxing. Just notice how your stomach feels. And notice as you focus, just do a little scan of your body. Just notice how your body feels. Focus in on your upper body, your back, chest, stomach, legs, arms, hands, feet. Noticing, and you know, you may start to feel more of a sense of tiredness, which may be the reason you're listening to this recording because you would like to let go completely of everything and drift into a nice, natural, calm, relaxing sleep. So now we're going to focus on your forehead. And if you choose, you can incorporate your eyes in this focus as well your forehead and your eyes, just that whole area basically, almost as if you were wearing a mask, you know, like a, I don't know, Batman mask or something, or I'm trying to think, <laughs> Zorro or something, you know, the kind of mask that covers your eyes, but also covers quite a lot of the forehead. And focusing on that area. Because that's the area that we're now going to release tension and stress from your mind, from your brain, and from your mind, and any tension that you may have remaining in your face, in your neck, in your jaw, in your eyes, your forehead, or your scalp. So basically, any tension within your head area, including your mind and your brain and that's going to be released through your forehead and your eyes as I count down again from 20 down to 1 now 20 19 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, Seven, six, five, four, three, two. as you scan your face, your jaw, your eyes, your cheekbones, your ears, your forehead, your scalp, your neck, the back of your neck and the front of your neck, 
the sides of your neck and your throat. Noticing, being aware of the comfort, the increased feeling of relaxation, not just in your head and neck and mind, also the rest of your body. Notice how loose and calm you feel and how easily it is to just let go completely. Let go completely. How easily. do now is I want you to focus on the top of your head and we're going to allow every last piece of tension or stress that might be lingering or hiding in your body or mind or head to just be sucked out of the top of your head and released into the air almost sucked out into the clouds imagine a big cloud above your head almost like a whirlpool and it's just going to suck that tension out of the top of your head just take it away for good. As you focus, imagine an opening in the top of your head where that tension and stress and any remaining issues, maybe worries or concerns that are of no use to you now, can all be sucked out of the top of your head and taken away. As I count down again from 20 down to 1. Now. 20. 19. 18. 7. Seven, six, five, four, three, two. Breathe. 
Noticing how you feel. How relaxed and calm you physically and mentally feel right now. How peaceful. It feels so nice to just let go, to give yourself some space to breathe easily, to think calmly, and just to take a break from all that pointless worry and concerns about things that you don't need to think about right now because this is your time to let go this is your space to enjoy feeling deeply relaxed peaceful in your mind relaxed in your body can feel so good, so nice to just not have to do anything, to be able to really enjoy that serenity that comes with letting go completely. That peacefulness that comes with being in this peaceful space. And you can keep this sense of calmness for as long as you choose. you choose to drift off into a deep, healing, natural sleep, then you can do that. It's completely up to you. And you can keep this feeling of calmness physically and in your mind for as long as you choose. To feel completely relaxed. Completely relaxed. And I'd like you to make up your mind. That you're going to relax. I want to explore that with you, what it feels like when you actually decide that you're going to relax. Not forcing yourself, but giving yourself that, I guess it is a command really, isn't it, when you're telling yourself, relax, in a gentle but firm way, that only you can really tell yourself in that way. You can't really have someone else saying to you, now relax. Relax. You know. Um, it needs to be gentle, but you can't, someone else can't really have the same, the same kind of influence or power that you have over your own physicality, over how you feel. Because when you say it to yourself, it means more. It's personal and your brain and your unconscious mind and your body listens to what you say. So, for example, 
we'll test it out. We'll do a little test, a few little tests along the way, and you can get more of an idea of the force, the positive force that you can have in creating a sense of comfort and relaxation in your body and your mind quite quickly just by you telling yourself to relax. So I want to start by, let's, let's focus on your hands. So focus on your hands and just tell your hands to relax. So just say relax as you focus on your hands. You could say my hands are relaxed or I want my hands to relax. But I think if you actually do it directly by focusing and imagining that your hands can hear what you're saying, you know, like they've got little ears, which is a bit weird. So talking to your hands and just say, relax. Noticing. How your hands start to relax. Now focus on your eyes and tell your eyes to relax. So you're just saying the same word, relax. And find the right tone for you. You know, I might say relax, but you, you might say relax or relax. You know, you might say it differently to yourself. And that's important for you to gauge what feels right for you. So just tell your eyes to relax whilst focusing on your eyes, your eyelids, the muscles around your eyes, your eyebrows. And just tell your eyes directly, relax now. I just did that myself and sometimes you may feel that you need a bit more time for the different parts to relax, you know, because I start talking again and maybe that part hasn't relaxed fully. But what will happen is it will just continue to relax even though I'm talking. And that's happening with my eyes. Something else I noticed is when I started focusing on my eyes, they actually almost became, they got worse before they got better in a way. So sort of I felt a degree of tension growing in my eyes and then disappearing. So I think what that was really was just me becoming more aware of the tension that was already there but I wasn't but I wasn't focusing on it before so I wasn't really acknowledging it or um, really conscious to those feelings is still continuing to relax as well as my hands actually my hands have got a certain kind of energy like not buzzing but I can kind of 
feel a degree of energy in my hands. Maybe that's where the tension has been released. Maybe that's causing that. The next part, I think we should focus on the back of the neck. That's a part which quite often, uh, well for me, holds tension. I don't know about for yourself. But I think it's quite a, a standard place where tension is sometimes held. So, and I'm, I'm doing exactly what you're doing as you do it as well. So I'm telling my body parts to relax as well. So if you tell your neck, the back of your neck, focus on the back of your neck and just say, relax. In your own words, in your own tone, in your own voice. You can say out loud or you can just say it to yourself internally. But you're focusing and you're saying it literally to the back of your neck. As if the back of your neck can actually hear what you're saying. So do that now. Just say relax to the back of your neck. And I'll do the same. Now what I noticed, and you may have had a similar thing, is even though I was focusing on the back of my neck, other parts started to, I don't know, show themselves to me, or maybe because they want to be relaxed as well, but I started noticing the feelings in my shoulders, the tension in my shoulders, and in my upper back. Whether that was because my my back and my neck was saying, well, I'm pretty much okay. It's the other parts that need attention. But my low my my back and my neck is still relaxing. But I just became more aware of other parts that needed attention now this might happen and it's not it doesn't mean that it's going wrong it just means you're being notified of more places that also want to feel relaxed so I'm going to focus on my upper back so you can do the same even if you don't have any uh, feelings of tension that are obvious in your upper back. If you just focus on your back and the whole area from your shoulder blades down to the middle of your back, down your spine. And with me, it's more the shoulder blades that are more. Yeah, that's the parts that are really sort of uh, giving me the nod that it needs relaxing so I'm just going to ask that part to relax and you can do the same now relax your upper back something strange happened there and this often happens I've been doing this for what, 16 years or something and often I don't know why I'm surprised but amazed really that 
can be a feeling. So when I was focusing on the back of my neck, my upper back was starting to feel quite stressed and in need of attention. As soon as I started talking to you about my upper back and talking about, you know, getting ready to ask the upper back to relax, my upper back already started to relax. It's almost as if it doesn't need to hear the words, just needs the attention. Just needs to be noticed. That is something that often happens in this type of situation is when you start to relax a couple of parts of your body as we've done with our hands, our eyes, our eyelids and now back of the neck, top of the back back, the rest of the body seems to just take notice and decide in its own way to start relaxing, other parts of your body start to just become looser, I suppose it's kind of like a bit of an avalanche, you know, the little ball starts rolling and before you know it the whole of your body is completely relaxed and calm. And if you focus on your face, you focus on your eyes, your eyelids, your eyebrows and the muscles around your eyes. Maybe you start to notice that your forehead is more relaxed than it was. Maybe your face is more relaxed. I would say my entire face is a lot more relaxed than it was. So we're going to focus now on your shoulders. Again, just like before, just tell your shoulders. I mean, you, you can do them individually. You can do right shoulder, left shoulder. I just generally do both at the same time. And just tell your shoulders as you focus on them in your mind. Focus on how they feel. Maybe... You can see them in your mind's eye. And just tell your shoulders to relax. Feels nice as they relax. But I do notice, probably especially with my back, is the connection between the different parts the back, the shoulders, the neck. Being all connected and being such a, a large part of your body, 
it's almost hard to separate them from each other. lower back has started to relax on its own. Maybe I'm going too slow. And that could be an issue because we all go at different speeds. And the idea at the beginning of this recording was for you to be able to just say to yourself, Relax. Without focusing on any particular part of your body. Because when you know that telling your hands to relax. And your hands relax. You tell your eyelids and your eyes, the muscles around your eyes and your eyebrows to relax. And they relax. You tell the back of your neck. You tell your upper back to relax. And it relaxes. You tell your shoulders to relax. And they relax. told your hands to relax, they relaxed and they continued to relax. And you told your eyelids, the muscles around your eyes, your eyebrows to relax, they relaxed and continued. Hold the back of your neck. Focus on the back of your neck. And told it to relax. It relaxed. And continued to relax. And you told your up back to relax. It relaxed and continued to relax. As with your shoulders, you told your shoulders to relax and your Shoulders relaxed and continued to relax. And it's not just that. It's that the rest of your body 
has also been listening. And that relaxation has been spreading. So from your eyes, the relaxation spread to your forehead. Around your face, into your skin, into your jaw. To the front and sides of your neck, all the way down your chest and stomach. Your relaxed hands and shoulders meet up through your arms, relaxing. Your forearms, your upper arms, your elbows, your wrists. Letting go. Your lower back. Your hips, buttocks, groin. All just start to relax or continue. Even more comfort. Spreading through your legs. All the way down to your ankles. The tops of your feet. The sides of your feet. And the bottoms of your feet. Relaxing. Into your toes. Each toe. Calm, loose, and as your body relaxes more, your mind becomes. Slower, more peaceful, to the point where if you choose to fall asleep, Easily do that. Easily drift away. Because there's nothing going on in your mind. Your brain is peaceful. body continues to relax between your body relaxing and the word that you say to yourself relax means that you don't need to focus on just one part you can just focus on your entire body word relax and 
happens uh, those familiar sensations of comfort spreading throughout your body. Loosening and calming and healing every part of your body. Feeling more relaxed. So all you need to do from now on is just tell yourself. Starting now with number 20. Nineteen. Eighteen. Seventeen, sixteen, Fourteen. Thirteen. Twelve.
ten. Seven.
to has slowed down, the muscles are more relaxed, everything is calmer, as a count say the word relax after each number and every time you hear that word relax you will feel twice as calm muscles in your body will slow down. 